All right, and we are back. Up next, we have Foxy versus Red Horse, which is our first elimination match. So before we go into that, Aura, tell me about what you thought about last game. Um, I wish that was a game three, but oh, oh, did too well. Like, yeah, they deserve to just two well it and go to the grand finals. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much to say because it was like I think that's the first like really like stomp game that we've seen this whole entire tournament. Yes. They just like blew it out the water. They were so good about really everything. They enabled UA. The supports would always come for the runes. They come gank. They really shut down um, KJ. And I mean, they played like flawlessly. And the boys were doubters of the Spectre pick. They're like, oh, I think if they have Spectre, they're not going to do much in the lane. But then the Spectre ended up popping off. Yeah, I mean, like, the last pick for Roll was a little bit questionable, but I guess they saw the Spectre of it and they're like, we really want someone to bully the Spectre. Mm -hmm. But I guess, like, all in all, like, against Spectre, it's not really about the lane. But regardless, Magic did so well. Like, she didn't let the Slather have her time. She trashed the lane as well. So I really think, like, um, oh, 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 like, really stole the spotlight for everything. Yeah, Oo has been playing really clean games this whole tournament and they will be going to the Grand Final. So who is going to get that big lump of money? We'll have to find out. But next game, we have Red Horse and Foxy. So this is an elimination game. Who do you think will come out of there alive? Uh, it's kind of hard because I think like um, one team sort of favors the early phase and the other team sort of favors the later phase which is what uh was going on in like OO and Raw too but then I guess because Raw is what I mean OO is just uh on form today like they were on fire like they uh they were supposed to be the one that's not as experienced in the early phase yet they still um took control of the game so I would expect that um for Foxy like they are the more experienced ones so i think they will take control of the records all right let's go over and look at our line of the players so aurora a while ago you were telling us you're a huge jail simp so tell us yes. what makes her so special i think like she's one of the few players who does not really have a very clear weakness for you to you know like take advantage of if you're like her opponent like to say that um she's not as strong in the early phase that's not true because like she she does play a really uh good like uh early to mid phase as well it's just that like she's much more like efficient and stronger in like the later phase heroes so i would say usually for players who are only stronger late Phase are not as strong in the early phase, but Jill has, you know, like uh, gone through games and games to prove us that to prove to us that no, she's not just strong in late game. She's also strong in the early phase. She's also strong in the laning phase. So that's why I really admire about her. And yeah, if we go to like the later phase, I think it's safe to say that she's the strongest like um, carry that we can see in this entire tournament. Mm -hmm. But there is on the other team of Red Horse, your fellow Commonwealth teammate, I Star. How do you think she'll fare up against Jill? I think as compared to Jill, Jill would have more experience, I feel. But um I Star is also like a player that um favors the late game more. Mm -hmm. And I think her teammates uh will not, you know, like have a trouble uh like have a hard time giving her the late face so i think it's really like it's a lot about isarx versus jill in this series i really feel that's the case because like uh they are pretty much the same type of players and it's really going to reflect on their plays mm -hmm. all right well let's find out who is gonna win this isarx or jill with their draft ready right now let's go and see the first bands. That's pretty good bands. I mean, like both those heroes have had a pretty good track record. I mean, besides last game, I mean, Undying is very strong right now. Snapfire also being a hot pick. 
Yeah, I think like generally, yeah, you just don't want to you know like face these heroes like undying dawnbreaker. If you take out the undying, you better take out the dawnbreaker. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's that's not many heroes that can really make dawn feel, um, bad. That's next, but like in terms of uh global presence and all, you would need the next to forever tag along the Dawnbreaker, and that's kind of not what you want when you pick next in your lineup. Like you want the next to stick to their cause instead. So I guess yeah, like it's good to just take out the Dawn so you don't you don't have to deal with it. And Red Horse do prefer to you know like oh uh. Let's jump on this guy, and then you know, like everyone jump together. So Dawn pretty much, you know, like um, stops them from having uh their game that way. And interesting, Foxy actually bans Bad Rider, because I've not seen Red Horse, you know, like um, even consider Bad Rider before, but yet they banned it. The Grim Stroke to come out first. This is a it's a Gia hero, isn't it? Yes, it is, and um. Grimshock is always, you know, like um very safe to do in the opening, cause like you're just taking a grim, like you're not showing, you know, like what your cards are, and like this grim can go five, can go four, so really like there's not much to judge when you're the second pick and you feel kind of slightly bad because you would want to see what the other team is trying to do with their first phase, but now you can't see, and you have to show two heroes already. So yeah, I think it's a really good opening. Yeah, I like how they also finally banned the dawn because we've been seeing dawn almost like <laughs> yeah. every game. So but it'll be good to as see far some as variety. I know, you're also a dawn player, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I do enjoy the dawn core. Yeah, Lich and Tiny. Hmm. Mm, I don't know how to feel about those two as like a support duo. I mean, it could be a tiny core, but like. For now, I'm just not really a big fan of Lich. Yeah, same. Cause I think Lich is like has always been sort of limited to like laning phase. So if you don't do as well in the laning phase as a Lich, then it gets kind of hard for you to you know like help your team out later on. Cause there are definitely more like uh many other heroes that are better. But um. Here's what I never really expected Foxy to do. They pick Lich the other day, but that was like in the later phase. It's like they got their position five all banned out, so um, pretty much the only choice left was Lich. But then now they are taking it in the first phase, which is kind of interesting. I like how they banned the Bloodseeker as well against Pango. Yeah, I I, I think awful. I think they're just like nope, <laughs> no, we're not fighting that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thought Foxy would really prefer you know like their usual melee post five. Mm-hmm. Ten seconds. But I guess like Radiant you can't really see much because there's only a grim, so you don't really want to risk it. Because if you take an Abaddon, let's say Abaddon plus one, and they see it instantly, and they're gonna take advantage of that and just take whatever heroes that. Abaddon can't deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's true. If you have Grim against like melee supports, that yep. would just be instant doom for them. Yeah, and like Grim doesn't do that badly against Abaddon either. Cause when you pick against Grim, you would want saves, you would want dispels, so that you know like your team doesn't die in the soul bind. Mm-hmm. But then it's like as an Abaddon, you can only use your shield. Right. And that doesn't really do much, like against like Grimshroke. And if you have, if you say you have the spell, then Grim has it as well, like in the shot, like right. during fifteen minutes timing. Yeah. So I think Grim does uh, remaining. A, but a uh, much better job in terms of that. Five mm-hmm. seconds. I really do like Grim as a hero, though. I mean, you don't really see it in the pro scene that much, but it's really fun to watch. Yeah, I think they also did it to kind of. Um, enable the pango, so to say, because mm-hmm. there are quite a few Dying heroes that pick. makes the pango not want to play. They have already banned, you know, like some of it, like but seeker faces for it, and grim is one of those that really, you know, like as a pango, I don't think you want to face a grim at all. Oh, definitely not. Yeah. Even a wyvern can be 
quite frustrating. Ten yeah. seconds remaining. But they do ban Jug and PA. PA is one of I Star's heroes who yep. also got buffed recently. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really good combo with Grim, I guess. Well, they took the Ember Spirit pretty early. Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> hmm thinking. I guess, like. They kind of just want Ten someone to three. go in front so the tiny kind of have more options. Because otherwise when you look at it like you already show Lich, right? So Lich definitely can't be someone who initiates in a team fight. Mm -hmm. But Tiny can. But then as a tiny, you feel very bad if you're the only initiator. So I guess picking the Ember Spirit here is fine. Ember is one of the most stable spirits. Like, if you talk about Void, like, Void can't fight strength heroes. You talk about Storm, like, there's so many heroes that can, you know, like, give Storm a hard lane. Mm -hmm. But Ember is pretty stable. Yeah, and he could just, like, fly to the back as well and take out the Grim Stroke. We do have Spectre. I am currently liking Red Horse's drafts a bit more as of right now. Hmm. I think the Spectre is okay, but then they kind of Ten lack damage remaining. here. They don't really have damage to kill the Ember. Not even, you know, like to pierce through the Lich. I think we'll end up seeing the damage come out with their mid hero. I think they do need some kind of more like uh, team fight spells to bring it together though. The only thing we have right yeah. now is kind of like the Pango, but we do. It just looks like they need some kind of like AoE stun, something like that avalanche of tiny or something to have like good crowd control yeah hmm. but i think it's like picking the specter here might mean that you need to prepare for something like a viper oh i was thinking even yeah. A timber saw. Right. yeah it's kind of risky but if they have a better plan in mind, so let's say like they just want to fight as five, then the lane don't really matter as much. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. That's an Earth Spirit. Necro. Oh, instant pick. So that would be a Necro off lane. Yep, I think the Necro will just follow the Spectre. Mm -hmm. With the Tiny, I think it's just a really strong um, duo against uh, Spectre Grim. I don't think Spectre Grim can do anything against that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's okay, like we say, Spectre isn't a hero that does well in lane, but she is one of the strongest carry heroes to, you know, like join team fights, especially like once she has Horn, yeah, she's gonna be able to do a lot more there. Yeah, right. This, although Necro is like one of those heroes that like, if you have a really good lane, it's really easy to kind of like steamroll and snowball. But if yeah. you have a bad lane, then it really does not feel good at all. But mm. the lane matchup would be Spectre and Grim, right? Yep. Ten so that's kind of scary. I mean, like the Ink Swell with Spectre, that's kind of pain. Yeah, I mean, I think as the Spectre, doesn't matter what support you have, you already feel, you know, like stress when you see Necro. Oh, yeah. Because Necro is just, it's just too good against like Spectre. So yeah, like they, they definitely wouldn't have a good time in the lane and um it's scary because like usually Spectre isn't afraid of hard lanes, mm -hmm. but when your matchup is something like Necro, who can practically all the time play in your face, then that's a big problem. Right. Because you already lack the damage in your draft and now you have to deal with the necro. I'm not so sure how Red Horse can Deal with Necro as of now, but Five let's remain. see. That's still a last pick. I'm really interested into what Foxy Gaming are thinking for their pause one. I mean, it could, right? It could still be a pause one, tiny pause four, or, or a pause four, but like, I feel like it's probably a pause four. Yeah, I think Tiny is just one of the best heroes for Necro as a lane partner. Right. It's going to be the Zeus. Well, there's your nuke damage. Yeah. It's pretty good, especially like um, you can just rough, so you don't really have to be there. But it's not that good of a pick against Ember. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Alchemist. There we go. 
the alchemist. Ooh, this game, the picks are spicy. I mean, for the Zeus, though, like, this is going to be a huge positioning game for the Zeus because, I mean, they have Tiny, they have Ember, and those are two heroes that can, like, easily jump on you and catch you off guard. I mean, Alchemist eventually will probably get an overwhelming blink, so it's kind of scary territory for Zeus. Yeah, it is. And, like, the very thing about this Alchemist pick is they did it knowing that you know, like they don't have any last pick that can overwhelm this um, alchemist because they also have the necro as well. Mm -hmm. Like they have their early phase, they have their mid phase. So they're not going to go late. They're just going to say, look, you have a specter. We're not going to fight you late. You have a Zeus. We're not going to fight you late. So I'm going to pick alchemist and yep, we're going to take the game from here. That's what I feel with this alchemist pick. Yeah, that's, that's some good analysis and you know, we're going to find some good other analysis from our casters who should be ready right now. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sophie. There we are ready here. Automo, you saw the uh, uh, picks. You uh, saw what our panel thought about it. Do you have any thoughts about this one? I, for one, also like Foxy Gaming's draft. I think it's pretty, pretty solid. I, th I, I agree. I think the Foxy Gaming has a lot going for them. I love the Alchemist pick because we're seeing these games go late. Might as well take an Alchemist. We can just farm. Uh, the Necrophos is a good pick as well. I think I like a lot of Foxy Gaming is bringing, but I think Red Horse was just going to pull off their draft. I, they seem like a stronger team on paper. I don't think that their draft is weak by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm, I'm still going to go with Red Horse despite everything. Uh, so with that being said, we are going to be jumping into the game here to see what's going on. We're seeing that uh, pretty much heroes are just leaving their base. I have to say, you know, when I look at Red Horse draft, I'm looking at this Grimstroke and uh, and the uh, Earth Spirit in Southeast Asia. Uh, in, in some of the tournaments I've casted, this has been like the support duo forever. So I'm thinking that Red Horse are probably going to be knowing how to utilize it. And I, if they do well, they can win this game. But I feel like if the Earth Spirit and the Grimstroke don't pop off together, uh, that Foxy Gaming are just going to be uh, getting away with it. I, I like it. The, the Spectre has been completely countered. The Zeus can be dealt with. You have ways to go for him. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot of things to invade the jungle of the Alchemist. I, I'm just loving Foxy Gaming's draft overall. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the same time, the Gia is like one of the best Grimstroke players out there. And look, that's nice jump in by the guy. We might be able to get killed sleepless. Is she going to fall? The Pango is still living, but it's only five seconds now on the shield crash, so not gonna be uh, that big of a deal once it expires. Lagaya looking uh, pretty much dead as well. I'm not sure she can get away. Okay, Oof. that's a beautiful play coming out from her, and Sleepless does have the tree toss fairly soon with that. Uh uh, first spell from the Necro, maybe they can kill the Gaia, there is gonna be a roll fairly soon, but the slows, the Lich, we all know that this hero can constantly fight, constantly slow, constantly be annoying, and that's a good start for Foxy Gaming. It is, it's really, like, they get the first blood, who actually got the first blood, the first blood goes to, oh, the Alchemist, and they get three, by the way, they also got three Bounty Druids, luckily for them, no one takes Give Us Greed at level one, but it's still a just massive win for Foxy Gaming at the start of the game. And, but I mean, still, I am going to go with Red Horse. I'd be shocked if they are the first team eliminated from the FSL Elite. They just have the insane players. Like we're saying, I star, the winner of the of the Birmingham Championship, represents Malaysia. Her partner is on, is literally casting with us. I can't imagine this girl is going to be the first one out. Just uh, boggles my mind. We'll see if uh, if that happens or not. Uh, though, to be honest, it is a best of three series. Yes. So, you know, you do have... Uh, uh, even if you lose this one, you're not out just yet. I'm thinking Red Horse, they went with comfort picks. And For sure. considering that uh, there were some of the uh, games that went a little bit longer than, than expected, mm -hmm. you know, uh, later on down the line, the Zeus is... A hero Alchemist hates playing against. You eat one Lightning Bolt with a Shard, and pretty much half of your HP is just gone, yeah. no matter how farmed you are. So, you know, that can come into play. And uh, Zeus also works pretty well with the Grimstroke. You can get, like, two or three Arc Lightnings, a Lightning Bolt to do it with the with the Soulbind combo. Because other than that, it's only, what, the Spectral Dagger, which is okay. But Zeus is a nice combination up with the Grimstroke. And Geo probably will get those Soulbinds off. There are a lot of people on Fox Gaming that sort of want to jump into the fight. The Ember, the Tiny, the Alchemist, even Necrophos was quite a frontline hero. So getting this double Soulbind is going to be pretty easy for them. And then the Zeus can just tear them a new one with uh, with all the lightning damage. 
A bit of a weird thing that Foxy Gaming allowed the Earth Spirit to pull the wave back and they didn't follow him. So that's going to be a full wave of experience just denied. And you know, Earth Spirit getting level 2. Um, Hanelisa is going to be in trouble. The the uh, Lich is usually very powerful level 1. Mm -hmm. But as the as the lane progresses, it's not going to be that big of an issue. But what is going to be an issue is the bottom lane where the Necro is dropping low. But this hero doesn't die so easily. So it'll be fine. And Sleepless just uh, puts her body up front there to uh, to protect your friend and for now no one will be dying in this laning phase only only the he kills that happened Ooh. before it big Top push by, by our Ligaya and is it going to be enough Hazelia walks into damage takes the stun from the alchemist but loses her life I'm sorry Hanis is the one that loses her life in the end so that level that extra level on Earthspirit making big big work so far yeah, really. I, I think that was that was the big mistake. Lich is one of the best heroes to kind of chase you down and even zone you out from that wave that you pulled. And uh, Honey Lisa doesn't do it. This is uh, this is not looking good. This top lane for the uh, for the side of Foxy Gaming. And to be honest, they should have done well. Two melee heroes against the Alchemist. You know, it is going to be tough. I like how she literally insults insults her. Jill's like, "Yo, you know, how could you do that?" I just have a laugh about it. Uh, okay, very friendly teammates, no problem. Well, not teammates, sorry. Friendly uh, match going on. Fre frenemies. Frenemies, frenemies yes. you know. So, um, right now, I think Foxy Gaming, they are doing okay, but I would like them to do a little bit better in this laning stage because the stop lane should have went uh, better Big for rock. them. The kick, Legaya, not only good at Dota, but good at football as well, though. Uh, he not enough mana on the pango. I guess if you have mana, maybe you can continue the chase. But in this kind of a situation, no. Yeah, it's it's fine. I mean, uh, like Red was, they're starting slowly to come out to come out in the laning stage. Mid lane still all okay for the Ember Spirit, but you know, Pangolier getting up the head of the Alchemist. Spectre's doing fine as well against the Necrophos, where she should be taking her ass. So. It's it's fine. Red Horse, they're very okay with this. They know that their laning stage could be a bit tough with Foxy, but like I said, like you know, early top, like in the beginning, Lich is strong, but then it starts losing a little bit of steam until he gets the ultimate back. So they are they're okay with this. Red Horse, this is a okay laning stage for them. Yeah, I think they should be happy, to be honest. I expected the Necro to apply even more pressure on the Spectre, especially with the Tiny mm -hmm. being there. But uh, Isar is is having a decent time in this lane. Even better than decent, I would say. You know, Necro is getting levels, but but overall, the uh, the Spectre is surviving Gil on the top lane. Has to be careful. The slow will be there, and it's going to be enough. Even with the Swashbuckle, not enough damage. The Shield Crash. Honey Lisa gives her life the away guy, for yeah? Gil. But did you really, did you really think that we're going to let you go going into the Tower. Zelia doesn't have any more spells. The guy misses the uh, roll. Courier that though. Will, will survive. Oh, the courier will not. That was probably some region as well. No, only the, the boots. boots. So, uh, I guess walking bare feet uh, in the lane not going to be that big of a deal. Oh, and look at that. She also gets a nice pull as well. And it is this top lane is should not have gone. I mean, they, we, we've talked about this. This aggressive three fours. We see it in this tournament a lot. And it's paying in dividends right now for Red Horse. Denied. Right, it definitely is. So Foxy Gaming, you know what is going good for them currently? It is the uh, the mid lane mm -hmm. that is where they're winning. But the Ember Spread, he's gonna be uh, she's gonna be needing to do some some heavy lifting in this one, to be honest. Because the side lanes, when you lose them and you should have won them, it, it's gonna be a problem as the game progresses, especially for the for the Alchemist. You know, with, with this kind of a start, the Pango and the Ember Spread can invade the jungle. Another factor is that we're going to see Zeus reach level 6 soon, which means that, oh, you might have thought you escaped, but then the bolts of lightning from heaven will bring you down. So, you know, we're seeing Jill walking around with a little bit less HP. Uh, Necrophos, if you go down low health, same thing. So it becomes that big threat of the level 6 Zeus. And she is level 6 now, so anyone goes low life, Zeus will just bolt them from heaven. It still is a ton of mana that you need. True. The Zeus is actually rotating towards the bottom lane with the haste true. And still, they did see her on the vision. And it seems like Foxy Gaming, they'll be aware of this one. Still, Zeus now does have a, a lot of mana coming back. It is a lot of mana for DLT. Yeah. But I guess you can always go back to the base. It's not that big of a deal, especially if you're getting the kill around oh, the map. Oh, God. guy with another courier kill. And Red Horse with a 1,000 gold. Not the biggest deal, but... You know, you are seeing them start to pull further and further ahead. Yeah, she can be in trouble. She just walks away as a level 2 soul mine as well if she needs to use it. 
top lane. Jill again does have the uh, frost armor on her, but oh. Honey Lisa, who's protecting you? You've protected Jill, but you need someone. They have the ulti from the Zeus, and now BAM! It can strike from the skies. He just wants to make sure that the kill does go to the Zeus, and Honey Lisa trying to get away. That's gonna be a perfect troll. You're going nowhere, and that's gonna be two kills going to the hands of Red Horse, Foxy Gaming. For now, they haven't found much around the map. They're trash talking. I don't know what that was being said, but I imagine Jill is not loving what's happening to her. That's the first kill coming out for Zeus. She's smiling. She's smiling. You're wrong. She's this loving This is it. a sarcastic smile, you know? It's like when someone, you know, gets, you're in polite company and someone says something mean, you're just supposed to smile. It's like that's, that's the kind of smile that one is. Well, in the meantime, though, we have to see Nin start being more active on this Ember Spirit because, like I said, they're losing the side lanes. You need Ember Spirit to start making space. She is farming, which is not a bad thing, but it's not help it's not gonna be the thing that helps you win the lane the, the game right now. And right now, Red Horse, they're one K gold ahead, looking at the levels. Pretty much even in that regard, but uh, you know, when it comes to net worth, it is Red Horse that are keeping themselves ahead. Uh, soon you're gonna be uh, having the Azus ulti again, and of course the Spectre one thing swell does connect. It's gonna be sleepless caught, silenced up, but here comes Ningen. She's gonna try to be turning this one around, the toss back, trying to save their uh, tiny, and it seems for now that's gonna be a possibility. Now a piggy running away through the water. There's gonna be a roar, a roll, but then Again, she's not gonna be letting this one go. There's gonna be a slide of fist fairly soon with a double damage. Should be a kill, and Mary is dead. Whoa. Give me a double. Lagaya, you want a triple? These two are brothers, but Ember is just gonna have the seniority here. And what a usage there of the slide of fist just to stop the roll and finish off Lagaya as well. That's the triple. That's the hero that needed to pop off. And now it is going to. Damn, I know I was saying they need to, to get involved. I think she's gonna get a triple kill right from the start. Uh, the kick by Lagaya actually puts her right next to Gia because they're hoping like all oh, the tower damage is going to kill, but instead it puts her right next to Gia and costs her like Jill? Be in trouble. Yeah, dead. I think she's pretty much dead. Oh, I said, yeah, it made a little bit of a uh, mistake there and, you know, gonna have to uh, to go out. So, no way that you're gonna be getting that kill oh. right now. Even the ulti from the Zeus, not gonna be enough, barely surviving. And now it's gonna be Azalea that is actually gonna be in trouble. Like Ningen coming over, burning her down. The Pango needs to run, but with the chains, she's not going anywhere. That is a dominating streak for Ningen. In the end, though, they did finish off the Alchemist. They have to use all their global presence though, which is something we actually didn't touch on, but the map, like the amount of damage that you can do globally with the Zeus and the Spectre is pretty insane. That was what got, got them the kill on the Alchemist. And Zeus gets, once Zeus has the Nimbus as well, that's going to add even more like global pressure on the, on the enemy team. Do you think we maybe see a Radiance on the Spectre just to completely annihilate the supports? Imagine Zeus ulti, Spectre ulti, the Earth Spray throws in, and there are no supports of Foxy Gaming. W would that be something that you'd be wanting to see? I'd love, I'd love to see it, but she's gonna go for the Aghanim Scepter first, which I agree with. Like you just want to be, yeah, they, you know, you want to get that Nimbus and the Aghanim Scepter on both the Spectre and the Zeus, and suddenly it's gonna be very active. Like Gaia, that maybe not where you want to be. Uh, that's most likely gonna be a kill. The toss is gonna be there. They do have the Reaper Sight. Still, they need her a little bit lower. And now Cat Chaser doesn't have the range necessary. The roll will be there. Lagaya is out. No points in silence already. Is uh, is that normal? Um, how often do we see this? I mean, usually we get like one value point. But Lagaya's been playing yep. pretty impressively. And she's only level four. So you want to get the, a little bit more points in your other spells just to get them going. So I might get the level five. Might get a level seven at this at this point. I am surprised she has absolutely no points in the grip. Yeah, we'll see if she gets it on level 5 before the ulti does come out. It is still a red horse stopping the, uh, the the net worth, but the one on the top of the chart, it is going to be Ningen. So the uh, the Ember Spirit is still the strongest hero on the map, but the smoke comes out from uh, red horse going towards the top lane. Okay, they want the Alchemist. They want Jill. Let's see. Farming the... Uh, Farming the jungle, how often doesn't do have see, the ulti anymore. How often do you see an alchemist lowest net worth core in the game? And he might be even low after this. Yeah, and not too often, but this is just looking like a disaster. Even had some stacks there, not gonna be taking them. And now, you, they're gonna see them rolling. These girls are just gonna be coming in. And look at the aggression from Lagaya. Though this time around, is she gonna be coming out of this aggression? It's not the Necro that you're facing. This time around, it's gonna be the Ember Spirit. And we know how it ended last time. It's gonna be kicking him away. Not gonna be happening. Ningen, completely fine. They're rolling Thunder with the, uh, the uh, Inkswell. Not gonna be stunning for that oh. long. They're gonna be fine, but look at Ningen dropping 
down. That's a, gonna be some beautiful stuns. Jumping up in the air. Still alive. The Frost Shield keeping him alive. And now Mary without any mana trying to run away. But the slows will be enough. The God falls. And Nazalia, she, they want to finish off December. Swashbuckle not gonna be connecting. Beautiful usage of the Slide of Fist. And she is out. December just looking amazing. Foxy Gaming, they're being kept in it by their mid laner. For sure. Like Ember's doing all the work right now. Absolute god tier performance just now. Uh, Zeus, they were so close to getting the kill on Ember. That could have turned it all around, but said they lose the Zeus and giving some time for Jill to get her farm going. But Nin is insane. Like, yes, they should not have the best performance. She was playing like these sort of less. Less active heroes, you know, like the mid sand king, they you know takes a building dagger. Now she's like, no, I want Ember Spirit, and she's just absolutely destroying the enemy team. Uh, it's insane. She's doing a really insane job. Yeah, for sure. They're trying to place down sentries in this jungle. And to be honest, in other words, they don't have any vision there. But look at how fast they're moving around the map. They were top just a second ago. And now they're gunning from the bottom lane. Nice uh, play oh, there. Nice uh, senses from Cat Chaser. She does get herself out. Is she going to go for the ward? That might be a bit. No, no one's there around to even stop her. And she's like, yep, just a free ward. They know now that they're spotted. We'll see what they decide to go with this. Cat Chaser is just not going to be a kill for them. Spirit Vessel on the Necro, no uh, charges just yet. There's gonna be a roll, uh, roll, no silence on the guy, so the ulti from the Spectre, not really gonna be amounting to much. And Red Horse, they are being aggressive, they're moving aggressively on the map, but not really getting any big kills. And I'm not sure, without the silence, this yes. December is just not gonna fall. Yeah, it's very weird, like, at this point you really need one point. It's two seconds at level one, that's enough to get a, a Phantom's Brace off on someone, like, it gives you so much time, but... Uh, as you can see, it's costing yep. them. And the Nin just would, I don't. I don't think it would have killed her for sure if she had a, geo, a, a grip in that level, but it would have definitely helped a lot. In some previous fights, though, maybe it would have happened. Mm. Um, there is going to be a problem right now. Either ping, either packet loss. Hopefully, it's going to be resolved soon. We saw some problems in the previous series, but they didn't really last for long. So hopefully, it's going to be the uh, the case here. Uh, the goal lead still slightly in uh, favor of uh, of Red Horse Foxy Gaming, though they do have an alchemist. So when does this hero start to pop off? When are we going to see his farm actually uh, starting to ramp up? I mean, she's, she doesn't even have the, uh, any component of the Radiance. She is very far behind. Like, this might say 900 gold for Red Horse, but in actuality, you're like 4,000 net, net worth advantage in, like, real value. Because the enemy, Al Alchemist is one, one and three. Like, this should not be happening. Nin is carrying the game, which is great, but Alchemist is really far behind. Level seven, by the way. The enemy cores are all level nine. That's how bad this uh, situation is for Jill. Yeah, it's not only the gold, it's the experience really that is making the uh, the big difference. Honey Lisa though is is pretty good in terms of levels. You know, the the uh, the Lich ulti could do some serious damage to the side of Red Horse if it does come to it. So Foxy Gaming currently, as you mentioned, they're gonna be uh, having to fight without their alchemist for a pretty long time. Do you yeah. think that Red Horse slowed him down enough oh, by that uh, she's not gonna be able to come back? Oh, I mean, no, if you're Alchemist, you can always come back. But it's like, it's different when you can come back in 50 minutes. It's different when you can come back in 20. So she's going to need some serious time before she's able to fight. You know, she's only got level one in the Greed Bulls Greed, which is like, like that's just, and you need, like we said, experience is a problem as well. So her farm is just going to be slowed down significantly. Spectre, on the other hand, is almost level 10. So it's, it's a very tough situation for Alchemist. But it's going to take time, and I don't think we're going to be... If we're going to see Alchemist, we're going to see Alchemist dead. That's the only time we're going to see her for the next few minutes. I star though is approaching that Aghanims. I really like the choice considering that you have the uh, the Earth Spirit, the Grimstroke. You definitely want to be deep inside of the enemy territory, yeah. and if you always have the Spectre there to assist you, it's going to be big. Hazalia also finishes off the uh, Diffusal Blade, so the damage output just got real for the side of uh, for the side of Red Core. So, what are the plays now for Foxy Gaming? What are they waiting for? Who do they want to go on? We're seeing Sleepless being pretty aggressive, but no one in sight to assist her. Taking towers with the with the Necrophos would help a lot. The Necrophos pretty farmed you have it you have the ember spirit is easily the strongest here on the map right now as well which i they don't have a good chance sorry good opportunity to close it to to lock her down so far so you have these tanky heroes the elusive heroes you got this the lich ultimate as well so i like what they're doing going bottom lane here it's up against a global presence so you need to be a little bit careful but this is a good opportunity for jill to just farm 
Soulbind is one nice way to actually uh, deal with the Ember. Yes. But uh, for now, is, she's keeping herself pretty far away from her teammates. Understands that that's the uh, the way to survive. But I like that Red Horse did manage to uh, defend this tower. They're not allowing Foxy to open up the map. And then even if you have the Alchemist, I mean, if the map is closed out for you, you're not really going to be getting that much farm. Exactly. And it looks like they might consider uh, trying to do something on Red Horse. And they do go for catches. So, ooh, they have an Ember Spirit nearby, though. Uh, though uh, he can come over, the uh, remnant is there. Sleep is coming over as well. There's gonna be the avalanche trying to save the necro. Not gonna be happening. Finally, the Zeus will finish it. We will finish the job and now sleepless running away she will be fine look i cannot finish that one off trying to run away they maybe should have let her do it because the chain frost then would have done a lot more damage but in the end it's just gonna be a kill a one for one a trade favoring red horse because they did kill off a core mm, awkward situation when you have a necrophos with spirit vessel but no charges you know it's like she's yep. oh. meantime mary Yep, let's see, Jill comes over, not to that side, that's not the place that you want to be running in, and the Sinister Gaze, you Ooh. thought you were gonna escape, but you're gonna look us in the eyes while we destroy you. Foxy, they got a really big kill for themselves, I like that the Alchemist got involved somehow in this game. I know, I'm really surprised that she decided to go for it, Jill, very aggressive move, it pays off for her right now, and now she's ahead of the, Alchem the, the Zeus. Zeus, known for being able to farm pretty well, but now she's lowest on the net worth. I, uh, I, that's very impressive. It's very impressive how, how Jill's playing. We can see why she's Aurora's favorite, right? She's like, yeah, she's my favorite player in this game, and she's uh, showing us why. Yeah, very stable, and even when the game is going bad, we see her that uh, she comes over to assist her team. This is what I want to see from carries. You cannot play a passive carry any longer, and, you know, uh, even at the higher, highest tier of Dota, sometimes we see passive carries not here. She is definitely going to be doing a good job. While that is happening, the Ember does get the uh, bottom tier one, opening up the map for the Alchemist, and there it is. There's the lead that Foxy were looking for. Yep, finally, the, like, out of the top four, three of them belong on the Foxy Gaming side. Even though Cat Chaser was killed at the bottom, then, oh, are they going to be able to get turned down? Now that's a bit of an aggressive play with her all not connecting. You can't get the kick back, and Cat Chaser is going to be fine. She is pretty tanky. Once this uh, hood comes out, it's going to be very tough to bring her down. And Foxy Gaming, they're getting to this point where their lineup is going to be very, very scary. The Radiance on the Alchemist, the defensive items on the Necro, the Ember. When she gets the BKB, then it's uh, it's going to be hell, all hell breaking loose. Yeah, at that point, you have to soul bind the Ember. Hope she walks next to someone. It's, it's still not ideal because you have nothing that works with her. So Foxy Gaming looks like they're going to be hitting a very strong mid-game timing. On the other side, like Earth Spirit still far from the Spirit Vessel. Um, Spectre, she has the Agus, but she needs some time for the for the Ranta style. Zeus is trying to go for a Kaya as well. So there's like a nice bit of farming items, or they're far from anything useful for Redor. So it's going to be a very big timing for Foxy Moon. We'll see what they do with it, though. I feel like Red Horse need to be forcing things out more. They have the Ags on the Spectre. They at least need to be forcing out TPs on different parts of the map to slow down the farm. If the map is just completely unpressured, it's going to be a problem. And they're going to try to play around their own ward in the uh, in the triangle. But in the end, they'll have to they'll have to back out. They don't see anything. And and right now, it's destroying Foxy. It's destroying Red Horse. They have to go forward. Mary even used her ultimate, the Thunder, on the Zeus just to find someone. They're like, alright, okay, we found Cat Chaser. Can we get her? This is gonna be a good amount of damage. The beautiful avalanche, though, to stop them in their tracks and not taking that much. There's the uh, the ulti from the Lich, but the damage is gonna be overwhelming. Hazelia just destroys them. Ningen will be getting another kill for herself, but it seems like the tower will still survive. So, Foxy Gaming, they lose two heroes, but it's not gonna be that big of a deal. The uh, game continues, but the lead will just slightly go back towards Red Horse just a second, but still a 2k goal for Foxy. Man, Mary just throwing out two Arc Lightnings with the Soul Bind was in, was just yeah, yeah it's incredible. That's the combo we were we were looking for, and it's only gonna get more dangerous later on once she has the shards. 
Still, that was uh, I think Hood wasn't done on the uh, on the Necro, so uh, we'll see how it ends up the uh, the next time. But this is what I wanted to see with the with the fight happening in the mid lane. Now the map is gonna be uh, breaking apart a bit, and this leaves the Alchemist vulnerable. There's gonna be a Shadow Step ready as well, and they're looking towards Jill. They want her dead. Their all will not be connecting, but now they have the uh, defusal. So yeah, gonna go to the side, and Jill has been caught looking very much dead. The jump in from the tiny Avatar's combo to all of them. This is gonna be a double kill for Ningen. They do lose the Alchemist, but it's gonna come at a very big cost the chase is on let's see if the ember spirit can get anyone else gia is looking like she could be going down but the big ball the movement speed might be enough to survive the ember doesn't get the connection foxy gaming they lose their alchemist so definitely not going to be too happy yeah it's still i mean yeah, i think foxy gaming is still gonna be pretty happy with that because they traded the core and an end the position four that was a that was a pretty fine position for as well so they're that's okay like they got way more they got more, twice as much experience as Red Horse from that kill. So if you're, you're Fox Gaming, it's not too bad. What is a bit annoying though is that Catchy just still doesn't have a single Necro uh, Reaper Scythe kill on this. Oh, wait, right? no. Hold that thought though. How? How does Sleepless have that much farm? Okay, rock into a mountain, and now there's gonna be multiple rocks. You can kick one, I can throw a billion of them, but the God of Thunder will be doing enough damage. Lincoln though already has a BKB. Look at that one. Is the Spectre gonna be going down? Yes, it's gonna be the answer. Hazalia with the Rolling Thunder gets herself away. And again, thinking about still going in. That BK, that double damage just presenting such an issue for a red horse for the entirety of this game. And we talked about Sleepless. She's a farm support, but she's, she's definitely not worth as much as the Spectre. I mean, she's got the Philosopher's Stone, which has just been a big factor. And that uh, double kill bottom was all, she got a lot of support, sorry, assist gold. And that was the first Reaper Sight and gets you the best target you could ever catch, which is the Spectre. So, Foxy gave me up putting an insane show right now. A lot of it comes down to Nin. Nin has been number one net worth this entire game. She's going to be overtaken very soon by Jill, but she has made a, like a galaxy amount of space for her team. 10, 0, oh, and 3. T today, these mid laners have just been popping off. Storm, I mean, Foxy the Gaming. Spirits, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the side lanes just didn't look that well for them, but then Nin just comes over out of nowhere and starts murdering everyone. The triple kill in the mid lane, it started it all, and it's just gonna continue now throughout the game. The gold lead is 5k, the game is far from over, but what can Red Horse do to kind of flip it into their favor? Well, they can start by maybe hopefully getting all those neutral tier 2 neutral items. It's 5 minutes past the, when they could spawn, but they decided, no, we want to smoke. Does Zeus have the shard with the shard? No, still no shard on Zeus. Oh, well, doesn't matter. They should go for Cat Chaser. And just as though she's gonna be fine for now, the sign is there, no way to remove it. Now trying to kill her, there's gonna be a ton of damage going there. But the uh, Hood of Defiance is gonna be keeping her somewhat okay. They are gonna be trying to do damage, not gonna be enough. She survives through everything, and just by surviving, Ningen comes over to do the damage in the end. It's not gonna be kills going towards the Ember, but their supports are still gonna be getting quite a lot out of those. I feel like Red Horse are starting to uh, lack damage, and this use needs that shard fairly soon. And look at this, the smoke from Foxy. They want to continue pushing forward. Yeah, that was a bit of a weird play by Miri not going for the shot. She actually has the goldfish. She had the gold for it before the fight began. She wants to go for the Nimbus. I I respect the decision, but you really need... She was throwing out double arc lightnings that were just tickling. You need that percentage damage. And Cat Chaser, what a goddess. Just standing there taking all that damage, not caring at all. And now, I'm, now we're officially in the Red Horses in Trouble territory. A full pipe is done. Full pipe is done, and the damage of Red Horse is all magical. It's literally all magical pipe. People aren't the biggest fan of it just because the uh, uh, the rate pack is better. But look at this now. Every single one of the heroes on the side of Red Horse is a target. Gia trying to survive, not going to be happening. It just goes down. It is so easy for Foxy to go forward because they know they just cannot die. And a good reminder is that also Pipe just got buffed, you know, the, the, the AoE magic resistance was increased from 12 to 15, so it is giving you as much as a centaur creep was, so that's, I mean, that's value, if you can get that combined with the Helm of the Dominator, look at the win rate just plummeting, Foxy Gaming, they, uh, they're making me eat my words, I was thinking, oh, Red Horse, there's no way they're gonna be losing this game, but they are looking... In a very tough spot. So much credit goes to Sleepus on the Tiny, by the way. That She jumps in, gets a like, four-man avalanche bottom lane, keeps Jill alive for a lot longer. And she's just looking insane at this point. Look at her net worth. She's 6,000. 
Yeah, that's that's one thing that we didn't touch upon uh, into the draft. The Thread Horse, uh, Spectre, Earth Spread, Pango. All of these heroes like to be really deep, really close to their enemies, and really close to each other as well. And uh, that's a perfect situation for a Tiny. Sleepless, she has always been in, in a good position. Now Lich even has a Glimmer Cape. I think the itemization from Foxy, it was very easy to go for it. Mm -hmm. Right now, with the Glimmer, no one dies. This Zeus just can't do enough damage. And Mary is going for an ass. She's not getting a shard. I think this is a mistake. I think they're lacking that burst damage. They need to kill at least one hero. I agree. I agree. I I think it's... Oh, by the way, she got a Necrovos. Do you know we were talking about magic resistance? She, she's also got a Nether Shawl as her neutral item. Yeah. So her magic resistance is absolutely wild. It's 64% magic resistance. No one, like, there's no way you're killing her with magic. It's very tough to go through this Necrovos. At this point, you just have to ignore her and ho hope to kill someone else instead. Is getting a Yules, though I'd be fine with a Lotus as well. It might be the greedier choice, but to be honest, I think you can get away with it in this game the way that it's going for you. I understand that you want a way to remove the silence, but even if you're not removing it and having the Lotus on you, I just don't see the uh, the hero oh, dying. Avalanche toss onto the two of them. Gia is most definitely dead. Hazalia will go for the Rolling Thunder, but let's see how much she can do. Uh, going through everyone, stunning them, but it's just going to be used as a disengagement tool. And Red Horse, they need to be on the aggressive. They need to get some kills the alchemist is getting too huge the guy uh, is gonna be in trouble here the stun lands in time this is gonna be another kill for them all oh, foxy gaming on a roll right now and red horse it's this is looking more and more insurmountable i i was shocked right foxy gaming by the way they came from the wild card they uh, didn't qualify here through points but they're making it look like yeah we're the we're the top tier team here right now yeah, most definitely. They're uh, they're making Red Horse look like an easy team to beat, to be honest, with this kind of a performance. Their draft, their uh, movements, their understanding of the game, all of them are working out. But to be honest, if this Ember didn't get that uh, triple kill early on, mm. the question is if the game would have gone this way. But still, you know, Red Horse, they needed to be aggressive one time. It, it goes badly, and the Ember, he always has a chance to, uh, to come back. So right now, with the 12k goal lead, was the play for Red Horse. They have a Manta on the Spectre, but is the damage gonna be enough they still don't have nimbus on mary i don't think i think you really want to wait for mary to have the shard because then with the percentage damage you can actually do something without it it's still very tough for them i don't think you can like nimbus is not enough you need nimbus and the shard we'll see if those wants to go for more though if they can catch someone you want to try to get the back line honey lisa sleepless it's so hard to kill everyone else they all have bkbs or insane magic resistance we haven't talked about Isar for, for a long time. She's going for a Nullifar. I think that's the right choice. This Necro needs to die, yes. and he's very hard to kill. The Nullifar pretty much deals with all of your uh, issues. So now, Foxy Gaming, they're not going to be so nice to wait for some Nullifars to come out. They're pulling oh. in the Spectre, the Sinister Gaze. Look into those eyes. Try to get out. Here's the Reaper side, the first one in the game, and it's going to be on a very important hero, Isar. She hasn't died for a very long time, but now she's going to be absolutely obliterated. Sleepless, she wants more more not gonna be getting it but who the hell cares asserting dominance is good enough for them there is something nice about uh, red horse which is that their high ground defense with the zeus is pretty damn impressive unfortunately you're up against ember spirit a blink dagger on tiny as well as alchemist so even though they can defend high ground it's still gonna be an issue for them if fox game keeps taking fights like that and by the way that was the second reaper site on kill on the game and both of them were on ice star that's that's not looking good. The uh, uh, the Roche now has been scouted by the Nimbus. At least they have the God of Thunder looking from Olympus just to see what's happening. But there they're being healed up by the new neutral item. So just staying in that area, planting seeds. And Foxy Gaming they go for a smoke. Ooh. They know that the enemies are coming. There is gonna be haunt use. The, the side of Red the Horse they wanna chase, but without the ulti of the Zeus, without the ulti of the Spectre, what are you gonna do? Yeah, and unfortunately, like that, that smoke makes it very hard because she, she knows they're all grouped up. Sleepless. Oh, now it blinks it, but it's a roll straight away. 
Yeah, she's the one that jumps in, but that's gonna be still so much damage. It's gonna be two of the supports dying, one on each side. Now going forward, Hazalia going for the Rolling Thunder, trying to keep them in place, but the damage is not doing anything, and it's actually her that is losing the HP. Now going on Honey Lisa, that's gonna be a nice kill. At least they're bringing down the supports. Jill has to be KP, will not be able to uh, get out the concoction, not signing herself, but neither the enemies, and now it seems like everyone will just disperse. Without the supports, can they walk into the pit? Foxy Gaming, do they feel comfortable enough doing something like this. Nice win for Red Horse. Yes, they traded one support for two, so it's not like they got so much out of it, but they delayed the the um, <clears throat> the ages from being taken. They're looking all right. Geo dying, that's the lowest value here on your side. So it's a solid trade for Red Horse. And we can't, we're seeing the Zeus. I think that was the first fight with the... No, she doesn't even have the shot, but she was able to at, at least put up some decent damage. Yeah, Mary definitely uh, showing up in that fight. The shard will probably be her next item. The Sanjan Kai is quite nice. I wouldn't mind an E Blade either, mm -hmm. but I think I think the Sanjan Kai just looks a little bit better in this game, especially if you get jumped by the Ember or the uh, uh, or the Alchemist. Okay, that's uh, uh, that's pretty optimistic from Sleepless, thinking that uh, that was the real Earth Spirit. Not going to be the case for now. Uh, Red Horse, they've done a good job in the past few minutes. I have to say, they're mm -hmm. keeping the uh, the net worth the way it was. Yeah, by the way, that, that was about sending a message. Sometimes you kill their illusions, being like, yo, you just, you know, we'll, you see what we can do to your illusions. Yeah, we can do that to the hero, main hero as well. So, three man smoke, though, for Foxy Gaming. And will they be able to find anyone? Ninkan has a scepter, so that's a lot of movement on December. They did scan out the uh, the specter. Let's see if Star is going to be able to get herself out. The Necro is not in the vicinity just yet, so there's not going to be a Reaper Sight. Maybe she can get herself out with the Shadow Step, but she needs to see a hero somewhere else on the map. We'll be using the Manta. Now the save is coming, pulling her in, and let's see. That Chain Frost not going to be doing that much, but in the end, the damage from the Alchemist will be overwhelming. The specter is dead. Hazelia will try to get herself away, but look at the Ember just going in and out. Didn't really know if she needed to go out, but it seems like they won't throw. It's going to be a decision from the team. Just go into that one. Spectre, though, does have a buyback. Yeah, but using it is it is would be a big risk for them. So I imagine... Is she going to hold it or not? We'll find out in a second. We get a kill on the Titan. That would be something for them. Yeah, Gia does go forward, though. It's not going to be a kill on the Tiny. It might be a kill on the Grimstroke. Keeping himself alive, though, with the Glimmer Cape will be quite fine. There's the ulti from the Zeus. The seed the of the Roche is low. Legaya. Legaya, she's preparing. They know where she is. What a jump. Oh. Sleepless comes over. You're not going to be rolling anywhere. You're going to be going into the ground. And this Roche will be falling for sure. Let's see what Red Horse can do about it. The Swashbuckle coming in, trying to disarm them, trying to keep them away from the Roche, but is it is yet? not going to help. Let's see now. There's gonna be a haunt. No, that's just a shadow step. Going for sleepless. They're gonna be trying to kill her. There's gonna be a soul bite. Hold the hands. Hold my arm, Tiny. I will not allow you to die. It's not your call to make, but it is Jill's call to make for the Zeus to die. And Red Horse, they've lost three. They're gonna be losing the fourth one. I start doesn't even wanna be a part of this one. She lets her teammates die without doing anything about it. They got a buyback out of Sleepless, but they still lost so much. They lost four of their people. They lost the Roshan, the Aegis as well. And, oh, it is really a tough situation for them. The, reminder, we still do not have a shard on the Zeus. She wants to go for a Refresher Orb instead. This is... I don't know what Mary is doing, but this is not the way. I, I, am I crazy? I didn't need to ask Aurora after this, but this lack of... Uh, the Agam uh, shard is hurting them so much right now. Uh, it most definitely is, but Foxy Gaming, 17k gold lead. It was 14 just a few minutes ago, but still a not insurmountable against the Alchemist Red Horse. They're still hoping they can come back, and this Nullifier on the Spectre, it's being closer and closer to being finished. Does this change much, Aroma? Will they be able to kill Cat Chaser? Uh, I mean, it will help a lot because you do nullify so much of her items. Besides just the pipe, you, even the Yule Scepter, you can uh, you can purge it off if you throw it, it was, then she Yules. So there's a lot of value, even in the Ghost Shot, of course. So there's you remove a lot, but that's not the main problem. You still have a very farm Jill as well as a Nin. So it helps to kill the, 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 the Necro by a lot, but you need so much more than that. We'll see if Red Horse can deal with every single see, problem that they have. They see Azalea right there. Them. Yep. See if they'll uh, go for her. Sleepless. Waiting for Guild to get a little bit closer. 
It is, uh... Azalea doesn't know that this is happening. She doesn't know that she's under vision. There, sleepless. Oh, but she does get herself out. Very nicely done. She, she had, I think she just suspected. She was like, wait, the way the outcome is moving, because it wasn't like all of a sudden. She started to like move a little bit, just a little bit, and, and Hazelia was like moving a little bit further away. She's like, okay. She's trying to keep herself in, in uh, blink rage. She just blinked out. Very impressive move by, by Hazelia. Radiance top I actually expected the Tiny to jump in, yeah. the Avalanche, then the Concoction to start getting used. But there is a Shard on the Pango, so I guess it is very hard to kill this hero. Just goes for the roll-up and pretty much will be able to survive through uh, through anything that you toss towards him. Exactly. So it does, it does make sense that they were they were trying to combo this perfectly on the side of Foxy Gaming. But still, 20k gold lead, they're holding the Aegis, but they're not going high ground. All of the other towers are taken. What is the play from Red Horse? How do they come back? How do they approach the fight? How do they approach the map? And I mean, if you look at, uh, it's all on I start to sort of push out the lanes, and that's what she's doing. You know, she's going. She's actually farming the neutrals right now, but she can send those Manta style illusions to push out the lanes as much as she can. Try to delay this Aghanim seven. Uh, sorry, Aegis timing. There's one minute and forty seconds left. So if they don't take a Rax in that time, suddenly you have a little bit of breathing room where you can take a fight because you're like, all right, if we kill, at least if we kill the Alchemist, he'll, she'll stay dead. Uh, and that's what they're trying to do. Remember, they still have a good high ground defense with the Zeus, who does have... Uh, what, what's her neutral item? She's got the Occult Bracelet. Occult Bracelet, that's interesting. She's not going uh, some... for the Eye of the Vizier, which gives you way more cast range. I'm very surprised by that. I guess 20% mana on the Zeus is quite a lot. Foxy Gaming in a smoke. They don't want to go high ground just yet before they get the kill. There's the ulti from the Zeus. He knows that something is up. He knows where they are and uh, will be able to get herself away. Foxy Gaming, though, do they even want to stop? Jill coming forward. The Ember Spirit is in the vicinity, pushing in the mid lane. The Nimbus will get dropped. The Alchemist disarmed, but as soon as his weapon are back. He'll be taking care of the Nimbus. He'll be taking care of the Towers. The Bash, the Disarms, they're coming forward. It's very annoying to play. Sleepless jumps forward, does have the, uh, the Ogre Seal Totem, so does get herself away. Rolling Thunder coming over. They are rolling over the Alchemist, trying to kill her, but no, they'll go into the back lines. Now going for the Necro. The Necro is dropping down the Spectre without the Necro in play. She's gonna be free to do whatever she wants. I star with the DD as well. There's gonna be the uh, ulti from the Lich bouncing around. The Gaia trying to get herself away, but will die to the text. And now the Ember going forward. Ningen, yeah, she has back. been the star performer for his team. The buyback does come over from the uh, Earth Spirit, and maybe it's time to go forward. Gil, what are you doing? What are you doing, girl? Get yourself away from the Spectre, but now the Nullifier onto Sleepless, trying to get herself away, not gonna be happening, the Ogre still told him, four staffs, nothing is gonna work, the slow, the stun, the sciences, Lagaya going forward, where are my Holy. friends, why have I been left alone, you haven't been left alone, the Zeus is there, and now the Spectre going forward, there is no Necro to finish her off, the Ogre still told him though, gets the tiny away, turns around with the Avalanche, the toss, is gonna be connecting onto the real Spectre, but I start, she's still very, very tanky, without their cores, they can't do it, Ningen, you wanna be next, no problem, we'll kill you as well, oh, now you're running, you're not so strong any longer sleepless trying to get away but being slowed down avalanche is gonna be there yule him up into the air and just finish her off as well that's gonna be four heroes dead on foxy gaming i don't know what gil was thinking but jumping into the enemy base not a good idea yeah i mean they first they got rid of cat chaser and they and then they got rid of ages from gil they traded two for two because Lagai and hazelia also died and then I was, I was like okay this is gonna be this fight's over you know they lost the ages but it's okay then jill was like no 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 i want blood she was out of ulti form she still jumped in and Lagai bought back what a chase by Lagai, by the way she was running into four people and she's like i don't care i just need to keep them here long enough for my team all she's got is, is a bracer uh, oh, the blast ring is no wonder. I was like, there's no way she's surviving so long. It's a blast ring. And tower. insane. Dyer's Lagaya, what a move by her. Yeah, I think she's the one that actually made this all happen. Foxy Gaming almost got all of themselves out. Mm -hmm. And even Red Horse, the rest of them were hesitant about chasing. But I think she was like, go, go, go. Don't be cowards. Go. And, you know, seeing someone like that lead the charge, you're never going to be able to, to keep yourself away. You're just going to go forward. And it was the right move from Red Horse. And... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't change much, though. They were 20,000 cold behind, now they're 70,000. The levels they got were, was a big help. Like, they got a ton of EXP out of that fight. Uh, Zeus getting close to that level 20 talent. You can take a little bit of a stun on the Lightning Bolt. So it's going to help Ajia. Right, she's in this, running the other way. She's going to be able to TP out. Should be able to... Whoo, that was tense for her. 
Mika, literally sandwiched at one point, but just the far far enough away. Lucky for her, it was it was nighttime, so she'll be uh, she'll be fine. But look at Gil. I mean, she's hungry for blood. She wants to end this one right now. You don't feel good. I think because because the necro can die, and that means that the specter is free to do whatever she wants. Yep. I mean, we, we saw that she just jumped on her. I think I think the nullifier. I know it came out on the tiny at one point. I think the first nullifier was definitely on, used on the necrophos. Yeah, necro, necro, yeah. Yeah. I know one thing we want to add is by the way, you can use it with the soul bind. You get the double nullifier. That's actually pretty strong yep. as well. Yeah, it can be a big deal for sure. Not allowing anyone to move, not allowing anyone to yield themselves, not allowing anyone to live. And the smoke from Foxy Gaming, where are they gonna go? What are they gonna do? They, uh, I feel like the girls on Foxy Gaming, they're feeling the pressure right now. Yeah. And that's why they're going forward. But Red Horse, they're just splitting the map really well. Yeah, I've been wanting. I mean, I've been wanting to see that a little bit from them, especially from I Star. But finally, she's doing it. Onin is here. This could be a problem for them. If they go. For oh, they are going. They are going for Nin. The science is gonna be there, but the BKB does get used up. She does have a remnant back. We'll be okay. Now it's time to bail. There is help coming from the side. BKB, and yeah. uh, with okay, let's see now if they can catch I Star. Catch Acer is there. I Star in a lot of trouble. They do have the Reaper side, but need to get her lower. Oh. That's low enough. It's time to send her to the grave for a very long time. 85 seconds without buyback. This is looking like a disaster. If Ningen doesn't die right now, and she will not, it's gonna be really bad for Red Horse because Foxy, they might be knocking on your door right now all right zeus does have a telescope on her so that does help you out a little bit but still she's going straight up refresher orb this is so greedy on mary i mean it's gonna have to pay big have to pay for her big time if she's gonna get it but i don't know man this lot this no shard build on zeus is the bane of my existence right now Maybe she forgot about it, you know. Maybe I, I like have it, you know. So, ah. uh, who, who who cares? That that I, I don't I don't think you, you don't want to get it. You no. Know? We'll see, right? Yeah, she, she can get it about in a few hundred gold if she wants to. Uh, I really hope she does, because I don't think I don't know how they're gonna defend without. It, but thirty seconds, not the longest time here. There is a chance for them to be all hold this. Mary just has to be very careful though with this uh, Ember jumping in. Also, the Blink Abyssal Blade is now a possibility yep. as well. So the Glyph comes out. That's going to buy them some time. Spectre will be back in 19 seconds. These towers are dropping low. But Foxy Gaming, they have got they got burned once. It's not going to be happening again. They force out the Glyph. They get themselves out. So the Raxes will not fall. But the Roche is open. There is going to be a Spectre. Oh, they're going to catch Chaser? That's not the best flicker in the world. Does have the Yule though. Let's see if the Spectre will be coming over. There's the jump in from my star. Not gonna be coming in with the real hero. So that means that they're gonna be fine. But going for Sleepless, they will destroy the Tiny at least. The Spectre now kills the uh, Lich as well. They do have a buyback on Lich, but not one on Tiny. Catch Acer trying to get herself away. The rolls are gonna be there, keeping her in place still. There's the signs. The Spectre comes over and annihilates the Necro. Who counters who now? Lagaya, she's not done. There is gonna be a stun from the Alchemist. Can he throw it out? There's the Concoction, the Blast Tree, keeping her alive a little bit. Not for long. Hazelia though goes forward. Gil without mana. Can she get herself away? The little fire is on her. Does have a BKB though. Should be enough to survive. Juking around the trees. But then again, maybe she's the one that's gonna be caught. Still does have a refresher. Has another BKB if she wants to use it. And even two more charges on her remnants. So at least Foxy Gaming cores will live. I would like to say nothing of value was lost. But Foxy Gaming, they're losing valuable time where they should be ending the game. It's not just the gold, by the way, because honestly, at this point, like 20,000, 18,000 gold, it's not the biggest deal. It's like, yeah, you're, we've been behind the whole game, you know? It's like, it's not like Red Horse, like, yeah, we're going to take that worth it, but, but the experience that they keep getting, they're getting so much out of this. Pangolin hits level 20 now, which gets that extra shield, that yeah, talent. Um, and Gia is very close to her level level 18, level 3 with the with the soul bind. So it's becoming more and more dangerous for them that, uh, that these kills are happening because they're starting to fall behind in terms of EXP. I feel like well, Foxy not far behind, they but need... they are getting the gap is getting smaller and smaller. I feel like Foxy Gaming have to be the ones initiating. They have to be the ones getting the first grab with the Reaper Scythe, and you might actually have to hunt I Star. To be honest, without the Reaper Scythe, I don't see her dying. And if the if the Necro is dead, I mean the, the Spectre can just do whatever she wants. Even going for a BKB, I like this one. With the BKB, there is nothing stopping her from killing the Necro. Uh, they have found G uh, Gia, and Gia is looking like she's going to be going down. Does get the soul bind off, so the Tiny and the Ember will be holding hands. That's so cute, that's so nice, but overall, going to be stopping fairly soon, so they broke up, it seems like. In the end, though, one hero dead, not that big of a deal, but the Roche will be open.
Kind of crazy that this is just the first game of this series. Uh, Red Fox is gaming 20,000 gold ahead and still aren't able to take a Rax. Red Horse, though, they are going to have to secede control of this Russia. Are they going to consider using... They have two global ultimates. They know. They know it's happening. Will they try to contest? It's a little bit tough into the ice bar. You're going to be running into the Avalanche Sea, throwing it just before the Roche is going to die. And Jill does get her Aegis. Who got the uh, the shard? I guess the Ember? Did he give it to the Ember or to Jill? Uh, Ember's got Ember's got a shard already. And Lich got the shard. They're, I mean, everyone, everyone has got a shard except Sleepless. So I'm not quite sure who they gave it to. I think I've never seen the, the potion come out from Alchemist before. So I'm going to say yeah. it was Jill who got it. Yep. Uh, that's the uh, that's probably the case. So right now you're up against the Aegis one more time. I feel like if Red Horse do manage to uh, to survive this one mm -hmm. without losing a single lane of racks, that they're gonna be su in such a commanding position. Yes. Also with the BKB on the uh, on the Spectre, that's gonna be a big deal. But Foxy Gaming, they're still the ones controlling the map. Mm. Yeah, I mean that that is the thing. Oh well, actually, bottom lane Hazelia is she gonna be? Out? She's next to Nin. She's rolling. And... Looks like she's just rolling herself out of there. She's like, nope, 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 don't want to be there. She's been doing a great job of just pushing out the lanes, making sure that they can't reach them and start taking barracks. And it's been a, it's been a, a problem for Foxy Gaming. Hey, it's been a big problem, to be honest. You know, they uh, they haven't been able to uh, to catch the Pango. Oh. They haven't been able to catch the Split Pushers. Going for a kill, trying to get the Aegis down. Look at the stun. being used. Now turns around. That's going to be a lot of damage with the Avalanche, with the Toss. The guy is dead. Doesn't have a buyback. That's looking really bad for a start to the fight. Azelia doesn't have a Rolling Thunder either. She might be going down. Does have to roll up, though. Will be curling up into a ball, into the fetal position. I want my mommy and gets herself out. Azelia will be fine. Not for long. Lotus Orb will be there to protect her as the Glimmer cape as well so it seems like it will be enough but the ember comes over let's see if maybe uh, nin can do something about this one she still hasn't died a single time in this game but uh, she will not be uh she will not be going in too deep my again she still doesn't have the shot so this is not the best hold but oh sleepers jumps in and it looks like Zelda might be losing her life does have the Lotus Orbs, that's gonna be the concoction being brought back in the back lines though. The BKB on the Spectre doesn't get on top of Catchaster, doesn't have the lockdown, but it did Lich kill the Lich. Now going for a kill, but Gil does have the Aegis, so it's not gonna be that good of a target. Does die once. Let's see now what's gonna be the response from Foxy Gaming. They're being stunned up, Sleepless is dropping low, has to be careful, doesn't even have the mana because of the swashbuckle any longer. What a it's hold. time to back out from both teams. The hold was amazing, the Aegis is down, the gold lead is great, but is it enough here, Automo? Oh man, doesn't look like it. Like we've been saying this, it's so hard with the, going up a high guard against a Zeus, and they're not, they're not committing to killing the Zeus, which means that Zeus is just getting off her spells. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you don't have a shot if you can still get like all your spells off. And they're gonna be, they have buyback as well on all their heroes. This is turning Fox to gaming. They feel that, like they're like we should be winning. You know, they like we should be winning. We should be able to take these builds, but they just can't. The BKB times are low. They've got refresher orb on the Ember Spirit helps, but it's just not enough. And Cat Chase is just being absolutely like, she can't go close in these okay. fights. There is now a ninja gear on the alchemist. So, uh, you know, being able to hide that big ogre of his, alchemist, he has definitely outdone himself for teaching him even ninjutsu. So, you know, <laughs> gonna be trying to uh, to find some pickoffs. I think that's a big deal, especially now when he has the abyssal. We talked so much oh. about the potential spells. Oh. Again, no, you don't want to be doing Man. that. There's gonna be a silence. There's gonna be a slow. Does have a BKB. Should be fine. Jumping in with the Grimstroke. Yeah. I don't think that's a position that you want to be in, Gia. And Gia will be going down. No, she's still alive. The Glimmer can't be even alive, but finally will fall. It's gonna be Ninja getting it. Kill still beyond godlike, but the damage it's gonna be overwhelming. Finally, they will bring her down, and out the alchemist switches the specter. Let's go. Who is stronger? Nin comes over. Don't touch my alchemist with the buyback on this ember spirit ninja. Doesn't want to be dead in this game. Going for the Spectre, the Glimmer Cape will keep her safe. And the chase will stop. Two buybacks were used on Foxy Gaming. Only one on the side of Red Horse. And to be honest, this buyback on the Ember Spirit it is just so huge. And not only that, like again, it's just the position five comes. Look at the Zeus's damage in that fight. Absolutely massive because they were able to get a really good soul bind. And she was able to just throw her ultimate. It is oh, it is looking scarier and scarier for Foxy Gaming. 25,000 gold lead turning into 20,000 gold lead and it's they, they're the ones who are holding the ages like look at the win percentage it, it, it's increasing it is absolutely massive how red is doing and it's all down to mary zeus like we harp on about the shot and rightfully so i think but and, and everything else she's doing it perfectly Speedy Runa. 
and it's actually skyrocketing there on the percentages of the wins for the side of uh, Red Horse. It looked like they're gonna be losing this one. They're going. Oh, they found Sleepless. He's gonna be fine. Ooh, well, Mary, man, we she's gonna be very happy that she's alive. Yeah, Mary actually used the refresher orb for that and weren't able to get the kill. So you have three minutes without the double Thunder Gauntlet, which has turned out to be a massive headache. Three Blade is also available on the Zeus. You can use it on yourself or your ally. And Spectre is about to hit, hit level 25. Could take the Dispersion or the Haunt Talent. There, is there a Silver Edge on the other side? There's no Silver Edge. This Knack of Break has also been proven itself to be a problem. And the Spectre is becoming an issue. You always think that the Reaper Sight is going to be enough because the damage is calculated before the Dispersion. So if you get her halfway there, the Spectre will die. But with this Nullifar, with Star going for a perfect build to be able to kill the Necro, she's not putting herself in any kind of danger. She does have a BKB, which is still pretty high, and has the Nullifar to kill the Necro. If the Necro dies in that timing, Star is not going to be going down. As you mentioned, you're going to be needing a oh. break. You need another way to kill her. Cat chase her. Ice star again. And there it is. There it is. That's going to be really bad for her. But Cat Chaser does get herself out. I start doesn't go forward with that one. We'll be stopping a little bit. Did have a, a little bit of a time of hesitation to go forward. A little bit interesting coming out for her. Jumping in from the uh, Alchemist. They want Azalea. Not going to be getting it, but still going forward. Gia might be going down to a Glimmer Cave. Just creating so much problems. No, no way. No way. The Ember dies now inside of that uh, Soulbind. They're just bound together. They can't move. Trying to get herself out. They'll be able to get out with the Stormbreaker. We'll be fine. Now the Spectre dropping low. Where's the Reaper? Side. There it is. She even reprocites herself, but who the hell cares? I'm full. I have all the magic resistance necessary. They're being absolutely destroyed. That is what they wanted. They wanted Cat Chaser to live, and now this use will be caught without his friends. Mary is just an easy picking zeros. That they do have buybacks. The game isn't over, but that's gonna be a lot of gold going into the hands of Foxy. Yeah, the damage was was coming out, but just wasn't enough. Look, look at that! Like both teams did the exact same amount of damage, but they weren't able to get the kill on anyone. Cat Chaser surviving that initial jump was all they needed, and holy look! Like the values you're getting out of these fights is absolutely insane. Foxy Gaming. Does she does she have PKB on Cat Chaser? Yeah, right. Yeah, did she use the yeah, yeah, fight? Yeah. 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 Oh, here we go. Are they going to be able to go for more? This is a big jump by Hazelia. Is anyone going to help her? And just trying to protect it a little bit. There are some clouds there, but no one cares about clouds. They're just going to be dropping down to the creeps and all of the heroes bashing on them. It's looking like these Raxes will fall. They do have the glyph. They don't want to be buying back. A very smart decision, very cautious decision. But is it going to work out? Gil just proves like to be a really fast pusher. Alchemist, the fastest attacking hero in the game, especially when the ult is off, uh, is on. But... Uh, it seems like Red Horse, they've lost two lanes. They might even be losing more. Do Foxy Gaming need to stop? I mean, why why stop, right? Like, it is 15 seconds against the Spectre. Spectre will not want to buy back in this situation. But oh, look at the stun. Yeah, Avalanche Sleepless. Gonna be finding an Underworld. That's a beautiful Lotus Orb. He returns all of it. But still, it's not gonna be enough for Hazelet to live. That is gonna be a dieback. Cat Chaser gonna be pushed in. Cat Chaser, though, still does have a BKB. So definitely isn't gonna be dying anytime soon. There is gonna be a Soul Bind. But the damage isn't gonna be sufficient. I start going forward. They want the Necro dead. But the BKB is there. Cat Chaser just staying near Ningen. And not gonna be taking any damage from the Desolate. Now the Nimbus comes out. They have vision. But they still need to do enough. That is not the real Spectre. So now the ulti is just bouncing off of, off of Creeps. And off of illusions, but Foxy Gaming, they'll be happy with it. They can still continue to push forward there in a four versus five scenario. Oh, sleepless, that's bold. She wants to get a kill on the guy, the guy's just gonna roll. Oh no, the sorry, the Yule Scepter. Ah, beautiful one from Cat Chaser that is gonna secure them another kill. Is that a dieback as well? No, she does have one, so Legaia can continue to fight, but the lead, it seems insurmountable right now. Foxy Gaming are just on a roll and they want to end this game now. No Hazelia, that's a big problem. Pangolier has been a huge issue for them. Oh, they're going all in. I'm going for Cat Chaser, but she'll be fine. Does have uh does have enough movement speed to keep herself alive now jumping in on the Spectre the Inkswell will purge off the stuns kicking her back they're trying to save her the Spectre does survive dead. and will be okay the Reaper Sight was already used so it's not gonna be that big of a deal and let's see Isar what can you do when there's no Reaper Sight can you do enough she has been caught in the back lines you're not gonna live for long Reaper Sight or no you still die does have the invis there keeping herself alive with neutral items Isar is she gonna be hiding herself they have found her they found her but she's out avalanche doesn't come out in time She'll be okay. The Raxes, though, have fallen. Foxy Gaming do have Mega Creeps. And this game, it is not over just yet. But that's just because Red Horse, they're refusing to GG out. Oh, Cat Chaser's in a bit of an awkward spot here. She does have BKB, though. 
Ah, the tossback will be there. Nullifier is not going to be stopping that one. Flying into the air. Tiny Airlines getting you to where you want to go. The guy has to use the BKB to survive. And Star, she survived a second ago. Doesn't have the Lotus Orb. They removed the Sinister Cage. She doesn't want to be looking at this lift. It's way too ugly. And it's way too scary. Star though, losing this game. It's going to be even scarier. And that's what's going to happen if you lose your life. Doesn't have a buyback. We'll have to use it. But now, they're still going forward. The Inkswell will drop on Hazalia. It will remove everything from her. The guy has to go back into the base. And now, they've caught Ice Star. You're going to be absolutely smacked by this alchemist. Who needs to break you with an item? We'll break you with our fists. And Ice Star, she is dead. That's a dieback. And that should be it for game number one. Yep, they call GG, which, I mean, it's a much deserved victory for Foxy Gaming. They. They, I mean, Jill had the very tough start, took her about like 18 minutes to start recovering, and she did. Holy crap, though, that is, like, it's, I've never seen a team be, in this whole tournament be so far ahead the entire game, and still feel like the Red Horse had a chance to come back. Unfortunately for them, Fox Gaming was just too strong. Their heroes scaled really well, especially their, their supports feel like they were always very useful. You get percentage damage coming out from... The lich, you get a great stun from the tiny, super fat tiny as well. And I mean, Lagaya as well as Gia, they had a much tougher time executing the, with their supports. But I feel like it all comes down to that. Oxy Gaming just looked so strong in that game. Yeah, Red Horse, there was this timing when they weren't utilizing. They had levels, they had the Ags on the Spectre, but they couldn't kill anyone. I think... For me, this Necro being able to stand its ground mm. and not die was a big deal. But of course, not to take it away from Ningen, I think if this Ember didn't pop off the way it did, oh, yeah. that Red Horse would have been able to run over them. But, uh, you know, Ningen just being able to pop off that hard and just everyone on Red Horse being afraid of just instantly dying from her, it, it was what, what kept them in the game. So now looking at this one, you know, Foxy Gaming, they came from the uh, from the wild card. Mm. You kind of you kind of saw them as the uh, as the weaker team. Yes. Do you do you see them that way now as well? No, holy crap! I mean, like you, know, you gotta be fair with your with with yourself. You, you go in, you're like right, on record, Red Horse looks really strong throughout the, all the opens. While Foxy Gaming is always like this was always like there's always the number four. They're always in their fourth place. But they come in here, they whoop Red Horse, basically, with what they were doing. They looked really strong. It's hard to go credit, but I think if I have to pick one player, when I'm like, one player, Nin. Yes, later, like, the second half of the game, we don't see her so much. But the first half, by herself, keeping her team up in the game. I think Nin is MVP by far. Um, that's game one, though. I will see Red Horse go be even more fierce in game two. We're going to go for a little bit of a break. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. I'm Atomo. This is Harry Freak. We'll see you guys in just a little bit. Hello and welcome back. Hello, Aurora. What a game that we just watched. Slight signs of life for Red Horse, but unfortunately they were not able to take away from Foxy. What are your thoughts on the last game? Yeah, okay. So I think Ningen from Foxy, like she just sweeped the floor. Like this is her best performance so far. I've seen her play. And yeah, I think like she's finally you know like um overcome that obstacle of hers because i've seen her play quite a few ember spirit but none of it like made me feel oh uh you know like she feels comfortable it feels like she's you know like not uh really having it as an ember spirit but this game wow she's shown like development player growth everything just everything on ningen yeah it was kind of like flashbacks to the game before with uh ua on storm it's very similar how like you know um, Nin was just on that spirit hero, completely dominating the entire map. Like that one triple kill did so well for her. And like like you were saying, like during the drafting, I think it was really smart of them to pick. Like they knew they weren't gonna really be able to do much in a late game, so they did pick. Um, they did pick up like the mid game alchemist with the necro, and like I don't know, it was so crazy because like they were really able to shut down Jill. Like. Like you said, you know, you hyped up Jill a lot, you're a Jill simp, but they also knew that and they knew how good of a player she is. So they really made it like, a, they made it a point to like try to shut her down. But Nin really, I don't know, she was on fire. Yeah, she is like, like a hero and was really on fire. But yeah, I think <laughs> like, um, I think a lot of the teams, like sometimes they kind of need to reset. Like, okay, we did good on, you know, like, um, destroying this timing for this hero then the next thing you need to do is who is the strongest hero for them now okay this is the hero that uh they can do stuff with so let's just change our target to this hero let's try pressuring this hero i think you know like most of our teams kind of forgot to do that mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I feel like they also just ended up playing much better with Nin. Like they played really well with their mid laner. While on the other side, like I think I Star did have a lot of like free farm, and she was like higher up in the net worth, especially compared to the Alchemist, who you know you rarely see the Alchemist being like in the middle of the net worth. But yeah, for, I guess they just weren't able to take it away. Mm. Yeah, unfortunate. Yep. Yeah, I think like um, for a Spectre versus Necro mashup with the supports like that, I think the Spectre definitely, you know, like did what she can and like she didn't have a hard time in at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right, well, our draft is ready. Let's go see what our teams have picked. Classic Dawnbreaker pick. When it's not banned, it's picked up. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're like, hmm, <laughs> I think it's safe to pick this down now. Ten yeah, seconds. I think so as well. Hoodwink pick on their side. I'm a Hoodwink Seven enjoyer, seconds. so of course I think it's a great hero. Oh, yeah, you're a Hoodwink enjoyer. So, okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Like, when you play Hoodwink, don't you feel it's kind of hard to decide what items you're going to buy that makes you feel really strong? Because I think I play a few, like, Hoodwinks. Like, I always feel kind of confused like hmm, what should i get uh -huh. you know i think for me for hoodwink like each game is very situational like i most likely won't be building the same items like every single game like it really just depends like if i'm pause four but most of the time like you've seen me play hoodwink offlane like most of the time <laughs> yeah. is what i'm doing but yeah it really just depends on like the game oh furry lane my favorite i love hoodwink <laughs> and pango like the lane is just so strong Let's just say if they pick everything that um you know like is from the offlane, you'll be happy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah, for but, me it just yeah. depends. You Radiant like back. every game you itemize diff differently, of course. Like sometimes you buy Yule, sometimes you'll buy the Force Staff. If you need physical damage, go ahead buy a Daedalus. Like if you want magic to damage, then you buy the E Blade, you know. Just depends. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like that when I played Huey, it's like that's that's not really a core item for the hoodwink. Like mm -hmm. you, you know, when you play something, you would kind of want a clear picture on at Five least one seconds. thing. But right. With hoodwink, you never have that. It's so flexible. You like you can go for anything. Mm -hmm. That's very true. I mean, for me, yeah. the maelstrom is always a must. That's that's about yes, it. Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're banned out the TA this game. Hmm. And another Bloodseeker ban that. against the Pango. But I do like the Pango. Like, whenever I see Dawnbreaker, I do like the Pango pick against it. Because it just feels like, mm. like to really enable Dawnbreaker, like, you need the BKB or you need the Shard. And even then, yep. if you have the Shard, it's only, like, Dyer what, like, pick. one point Radiant or two team. seconds of, or 1.5 seconds or something of, you know, having that magic resistance. But Pango can just yep. roll around, you know, disrupt everything while Dawnbreaker's on the field. This Void yep. Spirit pick, though, is really tricky because heroes like Hoodwink will just blow up against Void. Yeah, I think so too. And especially because Red Horse banned the Ember. So technically, that's not any, you know, like mid pick that can actually be on the same tempo as this Void Spirit and still have a little bit of advantage in the leading phase. I think that's not, yeah, there's not many heroes that can do that unless they dare to pick the Queen of Pain here, mm -hmm. which will give the Void Spirit a really hard time. They do ban the Ursa and Foxy, though. I feel like that's a respect ban, because the yeah, other day, like it too. Yeah, I Star had a really good showing with the Ursa. Yep. I think so far, Foxy's bans are really on point. Faceless Void. Ooh, it is the Faceless Void. Hmm. I, I mean, I think... It's, it's a really good pick here. Yeah. Uh, not gonna lie, but like, again, we don't want to see a Faceless Void draft without, you know, any damage. So hopefully they will have um, an answer for that. I mean, at least you have the magic damage from a Sharpshooter, but for me, Faceless Void and with a Dawnbreaker on the enemy team, it feels kind of weird, no? Like, as soon as you Chrono, like, you always have the Sword of Guardian to be able to, like, there save your go. teammates. Yeah, I think it goes both ways because, like, when Dawn wants to, you know, like, ulti, and then if you're the one waiting for the Dawn, you can chrono her inside. So That's then she true. can't do anything. Yeah, so it's like, it's, it's, um, who gets to go first, you know, that kind of thing. Who gets to wait? But in the end, I think, uh, the matchup will favor Faces Void a bit more because in the laning phase, 
Dawn can't, you know, abuse her Starbreaker on Faces White. And then, like, uh, later on, Faces White is the one who gets priority on farming. Then, you know, in the end, ultimately, Faces White wins. But right. yeah, they pick up the quad that they really need, you know, like chrono damage and someone who's a really good uh matchup against uh white spirit. Yeah, I do like the quad pickup as well. Especially like with the quad shard, the silence is gonna be really nice, especially when you're going against like shaman. Yeah. I think as a shaman you really don't want to be catching heroes like this. That can do damage if you, you know, like can't get her. The Doom Doom is a nice hero here, actually. All of these targets mm. are very nice to be able to Doom. But um, it's going to be a very nice Lincoln's game as well for Red Horse. And unfortunately, Queen of Pain doesn't have that Spellblock talent anymore, so... Five yep, that, that was broken, actually. Yeah, it was very <laughs> broken. <laughs> I'm glad they removed it. But yeah, I think this new Doom, if she gets to build an axe on her, it's really good against Red Horse. Because Red Horse is like really playing for mobility right now. Like all of their heroes are very mobile. Mm -hmm. And if this Doom has this agony, like, yeah, there's just no way you run from it unless you rely on your team to, you know, like four star view out and stuff. But like looking at Red Horse's heroes, like, I don't think they have a good hero to buy four stuff aside from the Hoodwing. And that's kind of pressuring, actually. Right. And the last two bands on Foxy are Gia heroes. You have the AA and the Snapfire. So yeah, I which wonder is what, what they're they looking into. Because mm. I think the AA really, you know, like, make it hard for the Dawn and the Doom especially. But, mm -hmm. like, Remaining. it's still, you know, like, easy for the Void. But, you know, like, uh, Red Horse is looking Remaining. at taking a full team fight kind of thing. So you will not want to give them uh, things like AA, Snapfire. It's a very understandable band. Right. For both of those heroes. I'm really wondering. I really hope this dawn is like a pause. What's it? Like pause three dawn. Because Me I want to see a grim. I want to see double doom. Double shackles. I I feel like ever since. You know like. I, I, I don't remember who. But one of the pro players who did the Deso on dawn. And I was like this this is it. This, this is the build yeah. for dawn. Like nothing else will ever compare. Nothing else will ever. You know, like, make up to that. It's so broken. Yeah. She's just I such think, a strong hero. I think, like, this Dawn is going to be a 5, though. It seems like the Doom is the 3, and the Shaman is the 4. Like, sleep, sleepless um, comfort hero. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a plus 5 Dawn, yeah. unfortunately. Unfortunately. If it was 23 Savage, it could be a plus 1 Doom. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but I don't think we'll be seeing that today. So yeah. they have 15 more seconds of reserve time. They have to pick something. Hmm. Interesting. Nyx is not banned. Do you think they pick? Oh, it is an Oracle. So yeah, it's kind of traditional to pick like Oracle against uh, Shaman and Doom. But like that's a Void Spirit, right? Yeah. So yeah. Right now, I think Red Horse is kind of vulnerable to this Void Spirit. Like, it really relies on the Queen to, like, not let this Void Spirit have a game. Which is kind of hard, because... It is king. So, yeah, I mean, it's a very obvious react pick towards the Faces Void. Like, you just pick Rave King and the Faces Void feel, Oh, okay, I can't actually kill you now. <laughs> you have two lives. <laughs> yeah. But then, if this queen like can get big enough, I think it's going to be fine because mm. like right now, Foxy Gaming's heroes also don't really like to, you know, like play in a game where this queen is all over the map and then doing damage, like destroying their waves so that they have no map. Because right now, only Void Spirit, yeah, only Void Spirit can get the waves out. But then, mm. a lot of the things also uh, rely on Void Spirit. You need him to initiate, you need him to do damage, and if he's using all the spells to clear the waves, then yeah. Yeah, I don't know. For me, like, it's hard to say. Like, I feel like Red Horse has, like, the better team fight right now. Um, they do have those, like, AoE spells. They have the Face of Void Chrono, they have Pango Roll, you have the Scream, the Sonic Wave. 
Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just really hard to say. I mean, on on Dire side, you have Dawnbreaker, and the rest are kind of like single target heroes. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know who I whose draft I like better. But we'll have to see what the casters have to say about that. Handing you over to them right now. Oh, thank you, Sophie. So you're gonna be uh, dodging the question, As but Automo, he is not. We, we are not. We are not gonna allow Automo to, to dodge the question. So Automo, you've seen the drafts. Mm -hmm. You've seen what uh, they've picked this time around. Do you have a favorite? I think I'm gonna go with Foxy Gaming's draft this time. I, I'm doing. I'm doing a 180, but I do love how their draft has uh, like so much sustain over long, like long fights. Let's go into the game. Actually, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Like. Doom lasts for a long time. You got Wraith King with a double life. You have Shadow Shaman who just can keep like throwing out stuns over the duration fight. If you look at Red Horse, it feels like they, you know, they throw out their big, you know, they throw out all they have and then they're just done. You know, um, Hoodwink and and uh, Oracle they tend to use their ultimate. They're not that useful after uh, Queen of Pain and uh, the Pangolin. They have their ultimate. And they, again, their useless goes down. Same thing with their faces. What I don't feel like Foxy has that problem, but heroes just seem like they're more sustainable. Long duration fights favor them. Lots of tips out for the guild. How do you feel about that, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harry Freak? Mm. Uh, let's see first if there's gonna be a fight. Gia coming up the high ground. That's a uh, Oracle level 1. That hero dies very easily and that's exactly what's gonna happen. Gia is just dead. There will be a fortune zen on anyone, but the only uh, fortune that is gonna end is gonna be her own. And it is gonna be Sleepless getting the, uh, the first blood. I have to say, I prefer Foxy Gaming lineup, but I think it does... Uh, uh, it does need a lot of good coordination mm -hmm. between them that they can't team fight, and I think because of it, I'm gonna be going for Red Horse to win this one. So I think we're going into game three. But if Foxy can spread out the map, force out TPs, get an early blink on this Shadow Shaman, and just keep catching heroes, it's gonna be a problem because Red Horse they kind of need to be together in this game. Because look at it, Queen of Pain, Oracle, Faces Void, Pango. These heroes need to play together against the catch because once they start spreading around, mm -hmm. if it's Sleepless catching them, they're all gonna be going down. I have a lot of faith in the, in the Void Spirit, by the way. Nin played absolutely out of her mind in Game 1. I think she's going to be able to do the, replicate that success in Game 2 on the Void Spirit. You know, generally, it's like, Void Spirit is probably the most tempo of the spirits. So I, I'm excited to see what, just what Nin can, how, how Nin can play in this, in this game. Top lane is going to... There is this point of the Void Spirit, you know, where first Power Rune, he's just not that powerful, but from the second one, he's just amazingly strong. Top lane, yeah, you uh, you mentioned this one. How do you feel about this this lane overall? It is going to be two melee heroes against the against the Hoodwink. Uh, it should be. Oh, I mean, they could just if they can catch the Hoodwink, she's dead. Uh, otherwise, there's a good amount of damage coming out. I feel like anyone could take this lane, quite honestly. Like it just comes down to how they play. I would. Honestly, prefer to be on the Foxy side. I do think that you have a pretty tanky duo with uh, with the Dawnbreaker as well as the Wraith King. You can just get one stun, fall up with the Starbreaker, you can just kill the, kill the Hoodwink. So I like that. It's slightly harder for Red Horse, but I would be surprised whoever wins that, basically. Uh, to be honest, man, if I was having two melee heroes, uh, you know, and I was playing against the Hoodwink, I'd be so annoyed. That sound mm. from its crossbow, like... Constantly, it's so annoying. And speaking about it, uh, Gil, she's being annoyed here. Uh, last time around, Hazali and Ligaya, they, they did play their lane really well. Yep. I kind of feel like that's going to be happening now as well. Uh, probably, although the guys take a lot of damage. If only Anilisa was one more level higher, she would have been able to get that kill. But unfortunately, did she actually put herself in a tough spot? This could be first blood. Yep, uh, Bushwhack, the only guy can go forward. Very nice positioning from Gil, just uh, protecting Honey Lisa. Beautifully done, you know, saving your friend. That is uh, that is pretty much what the what the world is about. If you have no friends, you pretty much, you know, there's nothing to live for. Uh, are we friends, Harry Freak? Are we friends? Yes. Yes, you, you called me your friend. Oh. I mean, you did you did say it in a sarcastic way, so I don't know. Why, but, why uh, you, you know, I'm... I'm uh, y my friend. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. So it's official. We are friends now. Honey Lisa, she's yeah. not friends with Lagaya though. Tower is under 
Yeah, Hazalia is gonna be uh, finishing her off as well. That's gonna be the first kill into the hands of uh, of Red Horse. Yeah, again, these two girls are just are just outdoing themselves in the top lane. I really like how they're playing. Um, the panel also highlighted that lane as being very strong. We also learned that uh, both of our panelists, I, I guess they are core players, yes. but they're very greedy. Like uh, Maelstrom on the Hoodwink yes. every game. Like it has to be that way. I've seen, I, I <laughs> see then. how Sophie plays, man. She goes Gleipnir before she gets anything else on her on her hoodwink. I'm like, come on, nothing? She's like, no. When I play with her, she's like, Otomo, you better force staff me to position, I guess, master. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel bad. I'm glad I'm not on the same server as you guys, so, you know, or, uh, or uh, you know, I would be getting the same treatment, so uh, us two friends would be uh, would be bullied by the uh, by the girls here, but uh, we're getting bullied anyways. Who the hell cares, though? Foxy, uh, they're gonna be slightly ahead mm -hmm. here. Doom is doing really well in the laning phase, as well as the Queen of Pain. Lanes overall, you know, they are definitely gonna be even here, but Cat Chaser, the uh, the big winner of the of it. I wonder if she's gonna go for the Hand of Mice. She skewed up the uh, phase boots. Uh, she might go for the Hand of Mice after. We might see Wraithing go for hands of Like, we might be in for a long game, because Faceless Void takes time to get online. So we might be seeing quite a few Midas's here. And, oh, Sleepless. And she's in trouble. Uh, gonna start healing herself up though, and uh, Cat Chaser does come over. He has the mana burn, taking it away from the Faces Void. Doesn't have any more jumps on Ice Star, so she can't go forward. Needed a few bashes there. Not gonna be so lucky. No, will it be eating a flaming sword from the Doom? Everything is kind of burning when Doom comes over, but overall, no one will be uh, no one will be going down. Everyone on the on the map is kind of low, low right? but not really not really in Seamless? in kill territory. Uh, she's taking a few more hits. By the way, I can, you can tell Sleepless has quite a bit of experience with the Shadow Shop. She takes the two points in the Shackles. Aurora was saying, she's like, oh, she's, this is one of her comfort heroes. And it shows, like, if you play Shadow Shop and you want to always get the two points in Shackles early, because they heal more than doubles. Top lane. Gel dropping low next to the tower, but the tower will be attacking the creeps. The creeps are protecting the king. That's, That's pretty right. much what they should be doing. Honey Lisa, level two, and not much you can do. That's the last little hammer, oh. just too short. And Gia does go down. Cat Chaser just a little bit too fast for the Oracle. And yet, for people who don't know, Sunset Hammer took quite a nerf in the cast rate. I think you start at what, 900? Now it starts, sorry, it starts at 1000, now it's at 700. So barely the attack range of a ranged hero. A uh, big nerf to the to the hero's uh, laning presence, honestly. Yep, the, uh, the hero did get a little bit weaker, but still kind of strong. Uh, that's a nice bushwhack, almost connecting on both Hanelis and Gil. I actually thought it was gonna, but in the end, not uh, not gonna be the case. I still want to talk about this mid lane. The Queen yes. of Pain absolutely dismantled Nin, and that I think that's what Mary wants to do. Mm. And look at the uh, rotation from Gia. If they kill Nin, it's gonna be really bad. The top lane has Alea dropping low. They did kill, get the kill, and now it's time to run away. The little skeletons are going for her, but she will be surviving and Gia in the mid lane does not get a kill. Okay, this is something that Aurora talked about, the Queen of Pain versus the Void Spirit matchup. Yes. Nin is definitely suffering. It's it's very oh oh guess it sleepless almost misses it but does gets the way the end. And she knows she's like there has to be vision here. Plus she's like there's no way she could just get that right there. There's also a few uh stacks coming out of Fox nice. Gaming side. So yes Nin is suffering but there are options for her to come back and she is a tempo sort of player. So I this is a bad start though. Like when you are a type of player, you would like to start. You know, you have some advantage here. She's gonna take a while just to re get 15 denies on the Queen of Pain. So she, even the, the experience is coming slow for her. Yeah, it's it's not looking good for for Nin. I guess you have to do that one. We saw what happens when uh, she pops off. Mm -hmm. So countering her, uh, countering her in the lane. No more small camp for you. So it's gonna be a straight one versus one, and we see who's gonna be winning that one. Void on the bottom lane has been caught. He doesn't have mana for the jump. Ooh. He's gonna be using the sticks, but he's gonna be dying before he gets anything off. The damage on the side of Foxy Gaming just overwhelming. They're in a one K goalie despite their mid lane going so badly. Like this, I'm I'm honestly like I love Shadow Shaman. Seeing this, seeing the way Slipper is playing here is absolutely amazing. Like the way she was able to get that uh, hex off, just in trouble. It's very well played. In the meantime, will we be seeing? Yep, Cat Chaser is gonna go for the hand of Midas after all. And what about Jill? I'm interested to see if Jill goes for it because you know just they're gonna go full on greed uh, for their for their heroes. Yeah, it seems like no, gonna be going for the uh, for the armlet. I think is the right choice. Mm -hmm. um, 
would be a little bit too greedy. I guess in the later portions of the game, Foxy Gaming can be strong, but we have seen that uh, pretty much the teams in the tournament, they do tend to gather around a lot in the later stages of the yep. game, and that is not what Foxy's gaming lineup uh, is that good at. So I think he should dodge that one and try to hit this mid-game timing around 25 to 30 minutes, where Sleepless is catching everyone, and the Raid King is there to, uh, to assist with the damage. Well, they also they, they have really good team fight on their supports though. Oh, Legaya, she finds uh, she finds only least, but Legaya might be the one who's actually in trouble here. Starbreaker is gonna land. Do they have enough damage. Oh. Uh, trying to go for it, juking into the trees. I mean, squirrels they know how to uh, how to hide in the trees quite nicely. So Hildwin Chris is gonna be fine, and that's a nice usage there of the acorn shot. And now it's actually gonna be Honey Lisa that drops down. Foxy Gaming getting a little bit ahead of themselves, and Hazelia she again has level six before Jill and can definitely go for the rolling thunder in the top lane. That's exactly what she does, but not gonna be getting on top of Jill that uh, quickly. So this uh, rating will be okay. At this point, Jill might start considering going to the jungle. You know, it's like the lane's looking pretty scary. You're gonna have, you have, she has level six. It's like hey, you might just want to go and give Honey Lisa the lane because Honey Lisa can then coordinate with Sleepless. Shadow Shaman catches someone. Shackle followed up with the Solar Guardian. Like the love, the fast level six on Honey Lisa would make a big difference for them. Yeah, for sure. We'll see if uh, they're discussing something like that one. Uh, we're seeing Hoodwing though invading the jungle, so there is going to be some nice vision there. Void Spirit in some trouble. Nin does get himself out, and Sleepless is there to protect. If Mary jumps in, there's going to be a Hex follow-up, and Mary would probably find herself in a really bad position. So we'll decide not to do it, and right now, they're going to be in the enemy jungle thinking, if this Raid King comes, we are going to be there waiting for him. Though for now, Foxy Gaming is still doing quite well. You know, in terms of net worth, I guess you have the Doom, mm -hmm. but their lanes didn't go that bad. No, it's, 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 it's all fine. And uh, top lane, there's going to be... They know this, by the way. They had a ward on the way. They know that they're pushing top. There is an, uh, an observer ward for Red Horse as well. So each side starts like, okay, I know they're coming. It's like, okay, they're hiding. So they know... And each side sort of has a very strong suspicion that this happening. And Dyer even used the scan. So they're like, yeah, we know. We know you're there. We're not going to show ourselves. And the guy's like, okay, the jig's up. Might as well just start to uh, help, help push this lane. Mary, though, shows herself in the in the mid lane, understands that, you know, that smoke was not going to work out. They will take the ward down now. Gia will be controlling that hill. And I have to say, the Ooh. warding... Uh, oh, they've caught the queen, does have the blink, and the haste will be uh, will be fine. Actually, no, that was an English run. In and why did it look to me like he had a haste like, really fast on the Queen of Pain there? It's probably a little bit of red on her or something like that. In the meantime, though, uh, Gia gets that nice D-word off. She's like, okay, there's no way they could have, like known like you could have sensed it it must have been they had vision and she gets a nice uh, d ward off for, for the team 2000 gold advantage for fox gaming three for three is the score but it is just nice farm coming out for our, for our foxy game for foxy team sorry the Doom is massive, but the Doom might be destroyed right now. The top lane, though, Hazelia is going for a Rolling Thunder. There's going to be two uh, different fronts here, and it's actually going to be the Shadow Shaman that gets caught. Ooh, Ooh, coming, from, coming from the side, he's going to be Dooming the Queen of Pain, but they miss the Eater Remnant. Still not going to be enough. Here comes the Sharpshooter. It's going to be connecting to the Doom. Deny? Slowing him down. Might be enough for the Queen of Pain oh. to live. The Deny. No, you have too low of an attack damage on this Oracle. And now you try to deny your teammate. You will die for your sins. You cannot kill your friends like that they've lost two and they might lose the third the oracle is still joking around the trees and actually Helzelia comes over to help so it's gonna be Nin that goes down something that didn't happen for a very long time in the previous game nice ulti there from the oracle gonna be uh giving a false promise to Hazelia, and it seems like it's gonna be a very false one Hazelia though it does survive it's gonna be a real promise i'll keep you alive i promise you this cat chasers though still not gonna be stopping for this one they're gonna have another round of shackles they will be getting killed but a sonic wave a big one pushing all of them you wanted to fight now you are gonna be the ones that are gonna scream the queen is bringing the pain and honey lisa going left going right but you cannot escape the uh speed of sound coming out from mary that's gonna be a lot of kills going the way of uh, of red horse they they do get to defend their tower but in the end you know the fight did end in a three for three yeah, I'm wondering if it uh, if it if it favors like which team. Yes, Red Horse got a lot more gold out of that, but honey, but they did so much damage at the bottom tier one, and they forced all these like big ultimates to come out. I feel like at the end it's kind of even. I think both teams will walk away pretty happy. With that Nin is only level eight, 
like barely actually is almost gonna hit level eight right now same level as sleepless on the shadow shaman this is not the same nin we saw in game one she's just not having the same impact at all yeah definitely not the uh not the same game but we'll see if something does change for nin definitely not feeling as comfort comfortable on this void spread but it can be uh uh kind of put on the bad laning stage that she had now three points in the simulate three points in the resonant pulse her damage is going to be fine and her farming potential is going to be fine Holy so i'm crap. expecting nin to do come back later on look at her net worth though 3.5 ouch oh sleepless you gave him to the wrong neighborhood still gets the bushwhack off but that's a max duration shackle. That's a dead squirrel. You know, she came to the wrong place to look for nuts. Yeah, that is uh, that is not going to be a, a good one. They also have a ward there on the high ground. I feel like Foxy should be getting that one out. This doom is way too massive, though. You know, we're looking at Nin having a, uh, having a bad game. But Cat Chaser is just having an amazing one. The BKB is almost done. This is one of the earlier ones that I've seen in this meta. Cat Chaser, though, speaking about her right I now. Feel. It seems like she's not going to be living. Oh, actually, the Solar Guardian is there. Honey Lisa will protect her buddy. And Azalea can't even get the connection with the Rolling Thunder. The Rolling Thunder completely useless here. At least they force out the Solar Guardian. Yeah, they'll, they'll be pretty happy with that. Again, like you said, Cat Chaser, she's 3,000 more gold than the nearest competitor on the enemy side. Like, she is... Giga, Giga farmed right now. Uh, I started thinking, okay, this game's gonna go a bit longer. I'm gonna go for the hands of minus. I like this, but I mean, it might have been something you need to purchase a little bit earlier here. And it's 40 minutes, it's not too bad though. We are seeing most of these games going to at least 45 minutes today, so it's not that big of an issue. Oh, Cat Chaser. Yeah, going for Roche. Yeah, Cat Chaser is looking very much dead. The, uh, the Sharpshooter is too big of a damage. A 45 second cooldown, Finger of Death, Ooh. basically. And it's a seven, it's a level seven Oracle, so that's even more burst damage coming out their way. Still, when he gets, when she gets a BKB, it's gonna be different. That's a big sheep in the Roche pit, so I I'm thinking it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be dropping down fairly soon. Well, it looks like they are at least gonna, yeah, they are gonna get, they're fine. I I guess they're fine with this, right? Cat chase or die, but you do get the Aegis. You put it on, on Jill, though. Will Jill be fighting? She is built for fighting. She's got the armlet right now, so it does seem like she can join her team and help them out. We'll see if she, if she decides to go forward. This is just some of like, all right, I can just farm even more aggressively now than before. I guess, you know, this is kind of the timing when Red Horse are going to be taking away one of the lives of the Raid King and then you can't do anything. But if you have the Aegis, it's a, it's a little bit different. Then I guess she doesn't feel strong enough to be uh, holding that kind of a... Uh, uh, that kind of a... Uh, Responsibility. Her. All right, we are... Oh. Oh, sorry, you first. Oh, I first? Uh, can I do it? Yes. Thank you, thank you, Otomo. We, we didn't discuss this one, that's why it was so unfortunate. But anyways, we are back. Uh, my idea of blowing towards the uh, the other side to where the Typhoon is blowing as well is going to be helping. And yeah, she is back. Ligaya is here. The game will continue. And Foxy Gaming, everyone is going to be looking at these girls and being like, they're such good sports, giving some of their paws to their enemies. So that is why we're going to have a full 5-on-5 five five game, hopefully there are no more natural disasters so that we can enjoy dota i i, I it's very cool of foxy gaming to just give them some of their time and it's nice to see that that no matter what happens red horse is going to be taking this game with their full squad however a long pause like that does affect the team mentally we've seen many times the teams are pulling ahead then they get a long pause and they start to lose their train of thought wait what were we doing oh do we have the ages because you, you think all oh, the games is it it's can you tell gone. us what's happening in the game because yeah. i forgot yeah i was like wait who who am i playing what am i supposed to be clicking right now but there is a smoke from Medoars. Clearly, after the pause, they're like, all right, we want to go aggressive. Maybe the guy's internet goes off again. Let's end the game as fast as we can. Uh, let's go. Those Typhoons, they can't be unpredictable. And Red Horse, they want to make something happen. There's still 5k gold ahead. Even though their player is back, they're not out of the trenches just yet. It's not looking good for them in this game. And Foxy, they're approaching their timings. As far as I remember, the uh, Shadow Shaman almost has... Uh, is Blink Dagger, yep, only five, six hundred gold away for Sleepless to uh, to finish it off. What's the play for Red Horse? How do they come back? How do they take a tower? How do they overtake the map a bit? I think a lot of it's going to come down to controlling the Shadow Shaman with uh, his Elia on the Pangolier. If you can get a Chrono, the problem is Chrono is not, not ideal right now. You know, you're up against a Wraith King with Aegis. So uh, you want to wait for that timer to go, to go, then you can bring down the supports. Uh, Nin, Nin has no farm as well. So... Your focus is to ignore the Doom as well as the Wraith King as best as you can and try to take everyone else and fight them five versus three, two of you. Like, that's the best situation you can honestly hope for. And Sleepless, 
on the shadow shaman she's gonna take a little bit of time to get that blink dagger because without the shard you really can't farm you can see she's like what do i do how do i actually get gold i literally can't kill anything yeah currently you know especially with the uh, uh with the passive gold being uh, uh being lower than it used to be it is going to be uh, taking her some time we can see pretty much all of the supports are relatively under farmed though one that uh, one person who is suffering the most in this one is definitely the void spirit and then they definitely shut her down and, and for a good reason we saw what happens when she uh, when she kicks off Oh, they know. Hazelia looks like she's gonna be fine, even with the tumbler star. It's not enough to get close. And Min oh, there's Jun jump. Can they get a kill? The pushrock lands. Uh, let's see if it's gonna be enough. No, the uh, solar guardian. There's gonna be enough heals now. It's actually gonna be the queen of pain that is in trouble. No save. Oh, actually, the save did come out from the oracle. Just it wasn't the false promise. The fate edict is gonna be enough. Jildo coming over, going forward. Just wants to show who's real royalty in this game. It's not the queen of pain. It's gonna be the Wraith king. And it seems like we're gonna be getting the fight from the side. Foxy Gaming are coming over. It seems like no, they've already lost one. They still have yeah. the Aegis three lives on this Wraith king. We need to kill him so many times. They found the oracle and the oracle will not move until she dies. Gia is dead. Rolling Thunder going forward, raking. He survives that one quite easily. And there is going to be a Shackle fairly soon. Sleepless going forward, and there's the Hex. There's going to be a Shackles as well with a follow-up stuns. This Pango will not move. Giving away the Dawnbreaker for that is a small price to pay. Foxy, they strike hard. Uh, they were able to get some farm thanks to that uh, Serpent Wars. And yeah, they killed Honey Lisa, but... At the end of the day, again, you're happy with this for if you're Fox again. You got way more than you gave. And again, the Aegis still got how much time does it have? Oh, it's still got 50 seconds. So they might just be like, let's go old top lane. Uh, Mary. Again, doesn't have the double astral step. Maybe if she had a double one, could have gone for that one, but still would be quite risky overall. Foxy, though, they do uh, get another fight going their way. The lead isn't increasing that much. This faceless void is farming really well. That's the one like saving grace, uh, and like this, you need you're gonna be putting so much weight on Ice Star. She does she does have the maelstrom. She's gonna go for the shard next to help her go in and out. And the thing is, unless Doom is honestly like used, I think you're always gonna be worried of faceless for you. Like, can I go in? Can I go out? Like, it's too scary. Even at the Shadow Shaman, at least you can get some heals coming from your uh, Oracle. But Doom, it's just too scary for her to fight. So you will probably only jump in after Doom uses Doom, or if Doom. He can be caught by the Chrono. Oh, there you go, Blink Dagger. Bliss. Ah, uh, the Blink out. Still, the Fortress End will connect, but a Sleepless should be far enough away. I guess not uh, getting a kill with your Blink Dagger showing is going to be quite nice for the side of uh, for the side of Red Horse. So Foxy not going to be the happiest about that one. Yeah, but they do seem to be grouping up here. Feels like they really would like to get something going, and that's a nice deep ward. Oh, there's a Philosopher's Stone. That's pretty good. You can put that on the Oracle. Get her some items that she really needs. So, yes, things like we were 5k advanced for Foxy Gaming five minutes ago. Now we're only we're 5k 20 minutes. That doesn't feel as bad, you know. It's like that's not that's not too terrible. Yeah, definitely not, especially having the Doom on your side, mm. pretty much a built-in Midas, plus a Midas on him as well. Though, Red Horse, they have something uh, of that uh, of that going their way as well, with the Midas oh, on the face of Void, Cat Chaser. Okay, they're going for the Raid King, but does have the ulti. Still, they might be needing the face of Void to come here. Istar is coming over, the Queen of Pain was caught, they need the False Promise, there's gonna be a Chrono, she cannot escape, and now with the Solar Guardian, the King is still alive, but the Queen, maybe not so much, jumps out, but will be dying either way, and now the face of Void there is no false promise to save him. Look at Cat Chaser having the Lance of Pursuit, and he's gonna pursue forever. But in the end, it's not gonna be enough damage. The Oracle, she, the uh, Oracle does not save the Queen, but does save the face of Soil Legado, left all alone without anyone around. And it's gonna be an easy careful kill for Gil. Half of the HP of the Hoodwink taken away with just one swing of a sword. And the tower in the mid lane is gone, opening up even more possibilities for Foxy. It's so tough to play in, in a game like this when you're uh, when you're behind playing the faces void. Like she wants, she wants to catch people, and she does. But she catches her ally as well, and then Doom just comes in, throws a Doom on her Gia. Uh, is she gonna be in trouble here? No, she manages to make it out. Gia's doing pretty well on the Oracle, but it's not enough to keep her team alive when you're this, like you're this far behind. So Fox is getting like, yeah, we should just keep steamrolling. There's no Chrono, Elisa. 
Okay, at least they're gonna be getting her. Oh, actually, he dodges that one. Okay, you cannot dodge the purifying flames. They do purify this uh, this Dawnbreaker. And she will be going down for 30 seconds. Zelia still going forward. Cat Chaser a little bit too tanky, a little bit too strong to bring down as they did to the Dawnbreaker. Yeah, Cat Chaser is just the biggest issue, honestly. Like, not only does she, have, does she have a BKB, she's also going for a Shiva's Gush. She already has the plate mail. She's got a ton of health. Oh, no. Yeah, she's, she's pretty aggressive right now. Uh, Cat Chaser at the mid lane, but top lane sleepless. She's fine, found Ice Star. We might be losing Cat Chaser, actually. We do. Ice Star, Juking and Jiving, creating space. And that's the biggest kill that Red Horse can actually get on the game. Yeah, definitely. In terms of gold, that's that's the big one. 900 gold swing from uh, just one kill. Oh, and now it's even going to be the Shadow Shaman in trouble. Needs to use the shackles. Might be able to jump away. Oh, we'll be able to do it. A little bit of a mistake from Ice Not using the time dilation immediately. But in the end, it's still not going to matter because Sleepless is dead. And uh, Red Horse, they do find their opening with just two kills in the tower. They uh, take the gold lead back to 5k. Yeah, small mistakes coming out here from Foxy. Cat Chaser way too aggressive in the mid lane, loses her life. Slippers then loses her life as well. They try to chase the faceless void. So it's it, the tide, the typhoon is turning. You know what I mean? It used to be raging at Red Horse, but now suddenly it seems to be heading to Foxy Gaming's side. Yeah, we uh, we kind of did something that's uh, that's not so nice to Foxy Gaming, but uh, in the end, who cares? We're just gonna be getting a better game here, maybe a better series if Red Horse do manage to win this game. They're still not out of the trenches as we uh, as we mentioned. 4K gold lead, not uh, not that high, but it is still gonna be a significant lead that Foxy are still holding. I Star does have the chrono, oh. but again, there is gonna be a reincarnation ready. Honey Lisa wants to protect uh, Sleepless. We'll be able to do it for now, but not for long. Sleepless is dropping low and in the end we'll be going down to the sharpshooter honey lisa in some trouble as well being slowed down even Doom's more here. with the uh, oh Chrono. what a jump from the doom oh. but the comes out he didn't pump the bkb still the damage not gonna be sufficient at least not for now there's the buyback the doom comes out to the oh. face of void there is a false promise ready it will be coming out but they lost the queen of pain now they can chase this void until the ends of the earth you are doomed it says so in my spell and you will be so until you die the false promise ends he survives but not long after that one the doom Still persists, and what a fight for Foxy Gaming. They turn it all around completely. Oh, they got two kills. It looked pretty good. The Doom jumps in, but unfortunately, I star Kronos, the Doom, as well as two of her allies, like Legaya, as well as um, Mary, were both caught in the Chronosphere. They lose their lives. I star a little too gung ho with that. And then afterwards, she doesn't leave in time. Gets doomed by a cat chaser and loses her life. It looked pretty good in the beginning, but box gaming, they use buybacks. Well worth it. Oh, here we go. That's a big shield crash. He's not going to be taking damage there for five seconds, but the five seconds are up. Still, beautiful shackles with the Sonic Wave. They'll be getting one kill. It seems like the Raid King will lose the first life. Here comes Ice Star. The Raid King needs to get out. Doesn't have a BKB. Not going anywhere. We will kill your king. We will take away her head. He turns around to fight Gil. Wants to show off what she's oh got. Dear. Doesn't have much though. Cat Chaser jumps in. Says, kill me as well. I don't want to live in this world if I don't have a carry. And no problem. Mary will be taking that kill. No issue whatsoever. Foxy. They just gave a little bit too much, and the gold lead is getting closer to zero by the minute. That's a dieback on your Shadow Shaman. That is not what you... You should not... That should not happen, basically. A little too over-aggressive here, and that's going to be the Roche going for Red Horse as well. And all of a sudden, that uh, that Typhoon was a blessing in surprise... In, in, uh, in Disguise. Disguise! Thank you so much. I've we've been casting. Man, we're such a good duo. We're such a good duo. Yeah. We we can't even find words, but we kind of uh, understand. Yeah, we know the feeling. Yeah. It was a blessing in disguise yeah. for Red Horse because afterwards it was like they just put the pedal into metal. And they've been doing so well after after that. Yeah. You know, between the two of us, we do have enough vocabulary for one cast. Right. Like we, one. we we can make one sentence between them. We have yeah. enough brain cells to string a sentence together. Oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, so, anyways, Foxy, they're uh, they're being crushed right now. They're 2k gold ahead. But to be honest, we talked about how they need to move well around the map, especially with the Sleepless Shadow Shaman. And Sleepless had a good early game, but for the past few minutes, that hasn't been happening. Even the fights that Foxy have been winning have been on the back of team fights, which shouldn't be their forte of their draft, and they haven't been fi finding this pickoff. So, Red Horse for me, they're just moving better around the map. Currently. Oh, for sure. Like, even though they've made, like, to be fair, it's only one fight that they won, right? Like, we go back to it, they only won that one fight. 
uh, where where Red Foxy extended. So I think that the overall it's still an okay situation for them. And just because Faces Void has the Aegis, I mean, Wraith King has a built-in Aegis, so it's still not too bad for them. And they are going to be pushing bottom lane as well. They'll be taking the outpost if you are uh, Foxy. Uh, they uh, they don't want to go for it right now. Not a lot of heroes from Red Horse are showing around the map. So maybe uh, a smart choice, you know, not knowing what was going to go your way. There is a Lincoln Sphere on the Queen of Pain here, Automo. So going to have something to defend herself from the Doom. Or maybe even defend her teammates. We'll see if Mary does uh, get some nice usages off with that item. I start that shard coming in clutch, able to jump in, find someone, jump out. They do find a psychic headband though on Fox's gaming side. Perfect item to give the uh, Shadow Shaman that 100 cast rage becomes a very clutch for the hero. Basically amplifies all the value of her spells. And they're just waiting. They're like, is anyone gonna come defend to bottom? We would really appreciate if someone give us a free kill. Uh, Red Horse though, they're not giving freebies any longer. It would be really bad if they do so. You know. Red Horse, they lose one hero, and they might be losing more around the map. Mm. Whereas Foxy Gaming, they lose one hero inside of a team fight, and then they're going to be losing more. So it's a it's going to be a different approach from these teams. Ooh. And when Red Horse are together, I think there's not going to be a fight. Mary even finds a DD. I, I'm not sure. Do you give it to the Void, or do you take it yourself? Yeah, I guess, I mean, she's waiting. She's probably going to just give give the ball. Yep, give the ball to I-Star. You have two minutes to find a good team fight. You also have two, two minutes and a half on the Aegis. So... You'd really like to find a good fight in the next two minutes if you're Red Horse. We'll see if they decide to go for it or if they're like, no, no we're just gonna like push them away. Check out the warding by Foxy in the Radiant bottom side. They have so much vision there. It's very clear that this is where they want to fight if they can get it, but they decide to abandon the area. A little bit inter interesting to see that. Yeah, they, they couldn't take the tower down. I think that's the that's the main issue that they were uh, coming in uh, in touch with, and without the tower dropping, Red Horse can't set up for a fight, so they uh, they just bail. Though still, uh, the outposts are gonna be traded yet again, and I think Red Horse are okay with the game mm. being extended. They don't really need to win with the Sagas, right? No, they don't. No, like, this doesn't have to be like the game winning where we have to extend. But Fox, they feel like they want to do something with this. It's a bit risky that they're going for this when the Aegis is still standing. Uh, what highlight a couple of items by the way. Lincoln Sphere finished on the Queen of Pain and Lotus Orb coming out on the Pangolin sometime. Oh, Tiny Lisa, it's okay if she dies. That's your position 5. You don't really care too much about that. Although there is a Both die of the position 5s will die. Both of the position 5s will die. I feel like that Dawnbreaker is a little bit more important. Yes. As you mentioned, dieback, and she's the only team fight that Foxy have. I don't think anyone is surviving the Chrono, uh, apart from the Raid King, of course, because he has two lives. If if there is no Dawnbreaker in play, so I start could go for an aggressive play if she wants to. Yeah, and she's also got the Holy Locket. She's gonna go for um, the Agadim Scepter after, so she just wants to get as much healing as she can possibly get for her team. Uh, by the way, Legaya on the Hoodwink, she went for a Blink Dagger into it was not greedy maelstrom like some people do she went for actual proper support items we love to see it yeah i actually can't can't believe some people would go for mel just kidding there are situations when you should but the uh the notion was i always go for a maelstrom anyways though uh, gia is gonna be tping to the outpost now looking towards the top lane the doom is not gonna be getting caught cat chaser she understands the dangers and gets herself out but uh red horse they're the ones controlling the map they're the ones controlling the tempo they're the ones uh who are being asked what is happening on the map and foxy i'm not seeing any kind of a response and the goal lead is just diminishing and diminishing and now it's almost going to be gone is sleepless going for an agon no that's not no, bkb all oh, sleepless might be going for the next life anyway sleepless is probably that yeah she's got an ogre axe is she going for a bkb just wants to make sure bkb she's... yeah that's interesting uh i'm surprised she just completely doesn't like this shard because you know, with a shot, you can just do so much with it. You can farm, you can push lanes, you can do, like, open up so many options. But we're seeing this, you know, these two teams, they're not big shard lovers. You know, game one, Mary didn't want to get a shard on the Zeus until, like, 50 minutes. This game also, we see Sleep is like, yeah, I don't like shard on the Shadow Shaman. She's a Shadow Shaman spammer, she would know. So I'm not going to question her on that. But I think... Mm -hmm. 
I think she's gearing up for the late game. Because to win a team fight against Red Horse, you need big items. If you get to the ultra late game where the Aeon discs, BKBs, and all of that comes into play, you can actually fight in the late game against Red Horse. The ultra late game. Right now, this this later portions of the mid game and the, the early late game, no. There's no way. But if you itemize correctly, maybe Foxy can do something in the uh, like f uh, f 50, 60 minute mark timing. I mean, that's a fair point, but again, I just feel I'm 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 a big believer in the shards, just so good. But she knows what yeah. she's doing, right? Like this is their their approach. It's a different play style completely. Um, Jill, we haven't seen her for quite some time. She's getting close to her BKB as well, about 600 gold away, and that'll help her quite a bit when she can get it. She also has that uh, um, mind breaker. Just jump on the oracle, one hit, stun, kill. That should be enough. What is the doom getting? Uh... I kind of would want to see an Aghanim Scepter in this game. Mm, Going for Albert, Albert. so wants, yeah. wants to break the Lincolns. Would you rather see that or an Axe on the Doom? I feel like the Axe on the Doom is just way too strong. Well, I, I have to go for the Axe as well. But what I'm more surprised by is she's sticking to the Lance of Pursuit. Instead of going for like a Dragon Scale or a Paladin Sword, she's like, no. The, dra the Lance of Pursuit is what I need, which is a little, uh, a little funny to see, honestly. I think she forgot, you know, right. maybe the nerves are getting to some of the girls, you know, it can happen. I love that uh, there was one pro game where a guy kept, uh, he was playing Clockwork, it was like South American, I think, uh, the TPC, and he kept the, uh, what was that, the, the four health region item, I forgot what it was called, but he, he just kept it the whole time, he's like, oh, I forgot I even had it. I, I forgot that there were better items for items, I just kept it the whole game. So, might need to do that for the Doom, though, you really do not want to have Lance and Pursuit at this stage of the game, where you can have, like, just, there are better options. I really like the Mindbreaker and the Wraith King. He can she can pretty much delete the Gia. If she finds the jump, mm. uh, Mindbreaker hit silence, stun, it's gonna be a kill. Especially when she gets a BKB and there's nothing to stop her. So I'm um, I'm thinking Foxy, they're still gonna have ways to initiate, but they've definitely missed their timing when they should have been crushing their opponent. So uh, it there is a good chance that it comes to bite them later on down the line. Yep, I I feel the same way as well. Foxy gaming. Uh, they played. It's all. Is that typhoon, bro? You know that typhoon happened. Everyone's like, okay, what happened? What's going on? What are we doing? Honey Lisa is getting very close to the Agnes. That is going to help, but it just feels like Foxy Gaming. They were really aggressive, then they were like, no, not anymore. So it's uh, it's definitely affected them. And look, you know what? It sometimes you're gonna get maybe a little bit nervous we talked about it maybe the nerves are getting to them but then you're like i survived a big storm like there's nothing for me to afraid right. to be afraid of you guys are just easy though uh let's see now red star red the uh, horse they do jump okay. in there and there's gonna be chrono onto doom trying to save him oh. with the solar guardian not gonna be happening with the sonic wave with the sharpshooter that's gonna be a nice kill and now a bonus honey lisa is gonna be that one she has a big mace but a the faces Floyd has an even bigger one and he can use it with one hand that is just how powerful he is sleepless is gonna be going to sleep believe me he might not have she might not have wanted it but that's what's gonna be happening Mary sings a nice lullaby a screaming one as sleepless goes down Foxy gaming they lose three there was no response yeah, the, I, I didn't think the soul guy I was like oh so guy not coming out but just come out very late and at the end I mean, I don't want to hop on about it, but if she had a different neutral item, that might have actually helped her to survive, because she could have gotten... What's the truth? She could have had a dragon skill 5 armor, giving her all oh, without a catch. What a bushwhack. What a bushwhack. Does have the ult. Jumping in from Jill. Mary? Going for Mary. Mary's gonna be fine. Just blinks out. Gonna be completely fine. A few of the bashes gonna be sealing the deal on the voice spread. Not on him, but at least kill the king. If they don't have a leader, what are you gonna do? Kill uses the BKB, turns around to fight. It's gonna be a silence onto the face of Void. I start looking like she'll be fine. She can definitely jump out. And there it is. Turns back time. Heals back up to full. And again, coming forward. The chase, it's not gonna be on there. Too afraid. Foxy Gaming won't get anything. Mm. No, at least, like, the best thing they can say is that they didn't use buybacks. Chronosphere is that Fox. They might say we should be smoking up the the Wraith King ultimate is gonna be up in 30 seconds. With Chronosphere is gonna take a little bit more sleepless though. Yeah, Sleepless is gone. Oh, the Doom Just comes out! Second. They'll try to save him, but the Doom does come out. There's the False Promise as well. The BKB was forced, was uh, used by I-Star. And now, this continuing to smack everyone. I'm doomed, but I'm still the strongest one here. Though the False Promise will end. And it seems like I-Star will be going down the Sonic Wave. Get away from my Faces Void, she screams. But the Faces Void is already dead. Sleepless, you know, gonna be going down again. This There's gonna be a dieback. Then again, gonna be an Ethan Holy Remnant. They're connecting onto the Fango, pulling him back in, trying to finish her off. Can they do it? Do they have enough? 
enough damage as they are comes to the side, but not gonna be happening. That's gonna be a beautiful fight for Foxy in the end. They do come out ahead, but it's gonna come at a cost. They lose four heroes as well if you count the buyback on the uh on the Shadow Shaman. Oh, she's going in with the Queen of Pain. Really? Really? Does she think she can do this one? The signs is there are gonna be keeping uh, Foxy Gaming in place and you know the Queen of Pain jumps in, jumps out, just plays with her food a bit. I mean she's called the Queen of Pain, right? She likes to take a hit now and then. You know, she's not called the queen of not being hurt, so it makes sense. She wants to try to stop the, the, the creeps from pushing him, but he's like, nope, can't do it. Now they have 30 seconds until the place is always up, 40 seconds until Hazilia is ready with her Pangolier. So they're like, let's go, let's get this. Three, two lives, we've seen Gil have trouble with that, but three lives should be enough for her to survive the Chronosphere. It is perfect vision, though. And uh, do they have enough time? It's, it's not the fastest Roche so far. Yeah, definitely not. The red horse, they're coming over. Can they protect this on jumping in from Mary? Uses the BKB and chill though. Still alive, not for long. Loses first of her lives. There is going to be a phase void coming. coming out soon. And we're seeing I Star coming over. But look at this. Yeah. Again, in a lot of trouble. The Ulz, but gets broken down. There's the false from or the fortune set. But in the end, still going to be fine. There's the uh, Chrono coming out. The Doom looking Bye very back. much dead. Is there going to be enough damage from I Star? No. Cat Chaser still alive. Pops the BKB. Will be fine. The buyback does come from the Queen of Pain. No. They don't have all of their heroes alive. They already lost the Oracle. Does have a buyback though. Hazelia going for the Raid King. Gonna be able to blink out. Still needs 30 more seconds. Protect the King for 30 seconds. She needs it. And uh, will they be able to do it? It seems like the answer will be no. And the Raid King will be going down. For good. Buyback also. Does have a buyback. Can't come back into it if it needs to be. And they will. Foxy Gaming, they understand the importance of this Roche. Will be buying back. Coming onto the outpost. There's the tire side. They have the advantage. They can TP earlier. And it's time for Red Horse to get themselves to the high Zoom ground. Try to defend the Roche from a good situation. Well, the uh, Hazelia jumps in. Oh, what a blink out just in time. If that's not that it's connected, it would have been really big. I start going to be using the time dilation. The Raid King does have the ulti right now. Hazelia going very, very deep with the Lotus Orb, thinking it's going to be keeping her safe. It is for now. They, Everyone is alive, Automo. Yeah, but the, the sheep, and that's gonna be Mary's still alive next to False Promise. Yeah, the False Promise is gonna be there. Jump saw, but that hex would have been really big. Sleepless though, dead. That, that's a hero without a buyback. Can they finish off the Pango? Does have the roll up, gets herself away, and will be fine. Swatch buckle used as well. And now let's say if let's see if they can do anything more. I star gonna be going forward. Honey Lisa gets herself away. Cat Chaser still does have the uh, They have Doom. Uh the Doom. But let's see, who do they kill? That's gonna be the Oracle Dead. Cat Chaser, is she dies? It's gonna be really big, but does get the Doom off. Gonna be trying to fight, not gonna be happening. The guy gets a double kill, but Ningen as well on the other part of the fight. The buyback comes out. It's a three versus three still. It's gonna be an even fight. No one is disconnected. Everyone is here. And the Doom on the faces void is still persisting. Can he jump out? Can he do it? The stun, the crit, get into the ground, I star. And maybe, maybe it's finally time for Roche. They started off with the Roche, but the only one that survives in the end is him. That is insane. By the so many buybacks are being used. They use what? Four five buybacks in that in that fight. And oh actually no Shana Sham did not. So it's only four buybacks, but they are still trying to contest this. Lidai, are you gonna go for it? No, she can't. She might be losing her life for her disrespect. And she does have buyback, but they have Foxy Game proving that when it comes down to brawling, they 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 know how to get dirty. This is the power of the dire side, you know, even though you uh, you kind of shoved in their high ground, they still control the outpost mm -hmm. even here in the later portions of the game and will be able to TP earlier. And that is why Foxy were able to overwhelm them. Red Horse, they gave it everything they got, but in the end it wasn't enough. By the way, Katrisa needs to get Aghanims. We can see her in the fight, she's desperately trying to get uh, her Doom on someone, but she can't. So she needs to just, just get the Agams, Doom yourself, and just follow the Faceless Boy. That's that's more than enough. You know, you don't have to actually just Doom him, because sorry, Doom the Faceless Boy herself. So it is turning... Oh, and look at that. We're getting very close to that BKB on the on Sleepless. Yep, very close. Uh, 350 gold away. By the way, so we'll have that fairly soon. And then when that happens, there's nothing that actually stops her from. If she can catch Faces Void, there's nothing that stops her. If she catches someone else, there's still a bash from the Faces Void, but it is a very false scary. Promise. Oh, yeah, sorry. There the is false, a false the promise. False promise can, I mean, by I mean, stop the, the Shadow Shaman herself from channeling, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. It's thunder yeah, silence. True. All right, with tier four items, but, though, everyone's like, oh, wait, those items exist? Let's go for them. 
Yep, there's gonna be some big ones coming out. The uh, new old item, Havoc Hammer. We all uh, miss the item that uh, used to do absolutely nothing. Now it seems kind of strong, you know, currently. Some of these strength heroes are very, very powerful. So mm -hmm. we see the uh, the hammer being used more and more. Foxy Gaming, though, they have the Aegis on the uh, Raid King. And they cheese plus Refresher on this Doom. Do they go forward? They use quite a lot of buybacks. But I feel like they now have the advantage necessary, especially with the double Doom. Another important th factor, by the way, is Honey Lisa does have the Aghanim Scepter. I'm not quite sure when she... I, didn't, I, don't, I don't feel like she had in the previous fight, but she has it now with the Holy Locket, with the Solid Guardian cooldown reduction, so she is going to be dishing out an insane amount of healing um, if she can get her... Like, she, she should be safe. Like, there should be no way that she dies in these fights. Yeah, the, uh, the Faces Void needs an MKB. It is a necessity. That mischance will be an issue. It will be a big issue. Inside of the Chrono, you're not going to be able to kill anyone. Exactly. So, uh, you have to get his... She's thinking about the Refresher. That is fine, to be honest. I'm just not sure anymore about the mana when you get the Refresher or uh, now 50 on the on the BKB, the 50 extra on the, on the Refresher. It's just not looking good. Well, she already has the Blitz Knuckle, so she might be going for the Monkey King bar. So, you know, it's just a couple of more items. Uh, you might need to get the Demon Edge. Ah, oh, it's expensive, though, and you won't have buyback if you do that. So, I, uh, it's an awkward situation, you know. Do you really want to go for this or not? Oh, smoke is broken. Yeah, Chaser, she's not the one with the uh, with an Aegis. If she dies, there's not going to be a single Doom, let alone a double one. And uh, Foxy, they just can't find the uh, the opening to get these spells off. Even though currently on paper, they look stronger. Mm -hmm. If Red Horse don't fight, they're going to be quite happy with it. Going into the ultra late game, you know, approaching like 50, 60 minute territory. Uh, do you see Foxy Gaming doing well there? Yes. Can, can this Doom really make a difference? I'm not really looking so much at the Doom. I'm looking at the fact that you can just have Shadow Shaman go, drop snakes, force you to fight. That's a very awkward situation to be in. Uh, and it, it's, it's a, it becomes a win objective for Fox Gaming having this support do that. And it's hard to engage because you Chrono, there's a heal, there's also an AoE Doom. It, it's difficult, you know. I, I don't think Red Horse is out of it, but we've seen the late game supports, the more team fight. I said this, more team fight supports seem better. and. Oracle and, and Hodwick, I don't think they can just match up to the other two. Yeah, they're, they're not on the same level, though they can contribute quite a lot oh, sure. to their uh, teammates. Buff them up if need be, especially the Oracle, just keeping her teammates alive. I star on the bottom lane. She has been doing the uh, same thing she's been doing on the Spectre. Really solid amount of split push coming out from her, but it didn't work out on the Spectre. The question is, will it work out on the Faces Void? And you are, again, up against the Dawnbreaker, who just has this global presence that is so much fun for you to deal with. And Smoke comes out here. They want to they see if they can find anyone. There's only 20 seconds left. Oh, the Chrono! Ooh, nice dodge. There is a Solar Guardian that's going to be a nice stand given to the Doom. He's not taking any damage. Ch K Chaser, she's okay. She'll be turning around. Needs to drop the Doom, but the Lincoln Spheres are still keeping her away. That's going to be the Lincoln's broken. The first Doom does come out. Anyone who comes close to this Queen of Pain is going to be in a ton of trouble. And look at that. She does eat the false oh, promise, God. trying to save her. Oh, the stun. That's going to be even bigger than the Doom. Everyone is in so much trouble. The false promise. It's not going to be healing her that much. It's not going to be enough. The damage is just going to be sufficient. The seconds on the sidelines and the side of Foxy Gaming they can continue going forward they still have the second Doom I star she goes forward but her Hirono already expended this is looking like big trouble for uh for Red Horse and all of it comes down to the fact that they just cannot kill Cassius Honey Lisa with that big heal Ragus and they're going for more oh they might be getting I star I star she gonna fall the Doom comes out I star looks like yep she has buyback but she is dead she has no thing of pain as well Okay, they will kill the Wraith King uh, once, but it, still she has one more life kill. Will she be wanting to run away? Ooh. Oh, nice shot, sure, a beautiful one. Yeah, literally into the back of the Void Spirit, and he couldn't survive through that one. Dodging the Chrono, but dodge this. The uh, gem is on the ground, They're not going to be taking it. Foxy, they need to run away right now. They understand just how powerful the Red Horse are when you don't have your spells, especially not having your Void Spirit. So Foxy Gaming, they pulled themselves out. They got the Void buyback, so if I saw dies it could be a win condition for foxy at the same time we will see if red horse decides to sort of push the envelope here get do get you know more out of the maps there are two people that if you can force a buyback out of them you can get a couple of kills that might be worth it or they might say nope we know mary's down we do not want to take any risks 
Oh, and there is, of course, a buyback and ultimate on Halilisa's Dawnbreaker, which means that you don't get a kill. Like, sorry, if you jump someone, there's a good chance to just turn back against you. Press are gonna say, uh, you know, uh, risk is my middle name, and I'm just going forward. They don't, uh, they don't care whatsoever. Want to be finding someone? At least we'll be getting Foxy Gaming into their base. But look at the Raid King out of the base. He's not gonna be confined in his chambers. We'll just be pushing the bottom lane as much as she can, and that's gonna create space for all of Foxy Gaming to come back in 25 seconds. All 10 heroes will be alive, and it doesn't seem like that's gonna change. Maybe Gil gets caught, but no, it doesn't seem likely. Yeah, plus even if Jill, if Jill gets caught, it's not a big deal, you know, like you have all this support staff helping you out. So it's a little unfortunate to see that. You know what, Shadow Shaman is going to go for the for the Agadim Shard. Finally, Wraith King is level 25, goes for the Reincarnation cast straight Fire Blast. We don't see this talent very often, most people are going for the crit, but I always feel like this was the better talent, you know. You get, you killed, you stun, you stun everyone. So it uh, looks very powerful. I like it. I like it in this game in particular because the BKBs from Red Horse, they need to be used early on mm. in the fight. If you don't use them, you're in trouble. The Lotus Orb is not going to help you. Uh, Red Horse, when the Raid King dies, they want to kind of rally around them if they haven't already used the Chrono. And that's just going to make it impossible. So I I'm liking it. I think it's the uh, it is the right choice, even though it's not the common one. I agree. I just feel like it's, all it's always been a little bit better. Check out the net worth, by the way. It's just... Everyone's... Like the four cores are kind of close and the support's not to fight behind it. This is a crazy game with less than 1,000 gold advantage for Foxy Gaming. It feels a bit more somehow though, even though they're, they're behind in terms of kills as well. Yeah, but the Queen of Pain does find the Arcane Rune. That changes a lot. The screams will be heard from both the Queen and then from Foxy Ooh. being on the receiving end of that one. Mary is just very dangerous currently. And Foxy, they're not together. You don't want to be making this girl mad. She's going to be screaming so hard. Everyone will die. Foxy, they pulled themselves out for now. But the side lanes are being pushed in. So Red Horse are going to have to be dealing with that. I wonder, if, I wonder if it might be worth it giving the uh, ninja gear to the Shadow Shaman, letting her just split push. But she does have Blink Dagger, she's got the BKB. And it's like either you bring a, a Faceless Void or a Chrono to the fight, and yeah, she does have the shard, so we, I expect that she'll be just split pushing a lot. Because you can, like, why not? You do, does she have buyback? She's, she's the only one who doesn't have buyback, though, for three minutes and a half. So that's a little bit of a risk for her. Yeah, definitely. And also, doesn't have the gold either. Has the telescope, so that's going to be quite big. And there's the Glaipner oh, on the, the hood with the guy. Now, actually, it does a lot of damage. Will she be using the Glaipner? Trying to find someone in the tree. It's not going to be happening. Oh, Nin, going to be a caught. Or is it the other way around? Legaya, what were you doing there? Try to go for a cute play. And in the end, you're just going to be food for Foxy Gaming. Uh, she And the tip comes out. The XD in return. They are having fun here. It is an elimination match for Red Horse, by the way. If they lose this, they're out. If they in Foxy Gaming, you, like, they're just having a whole lot of fun. Gia also in an odd position. Oh, uh, trying to survive there now. The damage is going to be from sufficient Sonic Wave, though. Not going to be enough. There's going to be a double Chrono as well. They're just going to be killing this Dawnbreaker. But how do you deal with the rest of them? How do you kill this Doom? The buyback, the Solar Guardian coming over. Everyone will be protected by the sun. And she will land, stunning everyone in her wake. Oracle, not in the vicinity. Actually, he comes over with the buyback. We'll be using the False Promise, but the Doom is there. You're not moving the Doom, though. Used on himself. Cat Chaser will be going down. So the boy is not doomed any longer. Let's see how much will he be healing. Ah, it's not gonna be enough. The face is is dead. That's a dieback. There's a buyback on the Queen of Fame. Maybe she can come into this fight, but no, they're being overwhelmed. Even if she was here, she'll just go down. The Oracle being pulled in, looking at that remnant. Oh, it's so shiny, but you shouldn't be looking at it that way. You have to run. The buyback from the Queen of Pain, they need to push out these lanes now because without the Faces Void, you just cannot fight. But Foxy Gaming, they're not looking to end immediately. They'll take it slowly and go for Roche first. Is this what the fourth Roche of the game? It is the fourth, so the, everything that has the Refresher yep. Shard, the Agadim's upgrade. You might want to give that. Well, I wonder what they're going to give the Agadim's upgrade to. I mean, they have got. Uh, Raid King? Raid, I mean, Raid, Raid King or Shaman? I feel like Shaman is pretty good, right? I feel like the, 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 the snakes do get double value when they attack people, but we'll see. Is it 3D carry or is it going to be a generous carry? He is a greedy, greedy. king. The greedy king gives nothing to How? his friends. 
How is she greedy? I mean, she's literally keeping everyone alive for extra seven seconds. That's like a philanthropist type of king. I don't know. I'm I'm not uh, in agreement here with you. Ima imagine the uh, mm -hmm. the shadow shaman, like a raid for seven seconds. They can just lock people down and there's nothing you can do about it. It would just be a disaster for, uh, for Red Horse. And what's going to be even more of a disaster is that Gil is coming over and you don't have your face exploit. But yeah, that's, that's a good point, right? If you are still able to stay alive for a bit longer, you can throw attackers. And oh, she traps Cat Chaser inside the Serpent Wars. That can come back to bite them, the Blubber. Uh, being a little bit too aggressive, going for the Queen of Pain. They don't have the false promise. Does have a BKB though. Mary will be okay. Zelia, they did kill Gil once, but can they do it again? There is a Aegis on the Cat Chaser, so you need to be killing so many heroes if you want to win a fight. One lane of Rax is gone. Let's go for another. Let's finish this one right now. But there is going to be a Faces Void coming out soon. Maybe it's time for Foxy Gaming to just get themselves out. There's the Glyph, and it's time to bail for now until you have another reincarnation. Yeah, Fierce Voice refresh your orbs in 30 seconds as she already has one Chronosphere. So, at the end of the day, Foxy Gaming, yeah, they get the mid, mid racks, but it's not a dead, like a death blow that's like, oh, yeah, Red Horse can't come back for this. It's a very good push by Red Horse. Uh, sorry, by Foxy Gaming, but Red Horse is still in the game. And interesting, is Fierce Voice gonna avoid. He's like, she's not gonna go for the MKB. I feel like the MKB is kind of a problem for her. I mean, like the evasion yeah, coming out from the Solar Guardian. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. Uh, also, big thing though, last fight, there was a buyback from the Dawnbreaker. Mm -hmm. So I think if if I was the Dawn right now, I go into the fountain. Yes. And she's not in the fountain. She's actually very close to dying. She might not be aware of it. And by the way, she she's was, very close to the enemies. She was caught in the chrono. Like she was the she was yep. the first person caught chrono. So oh, they're going for it. Okay, let's now go. Lagaya will be okay with the Lotus Orb. There's no way that the Shackles are going to be a problem for her. They're trying to force the, their enemies into the base and will be able to do it. Foxy, though, don't want to be committing just yet. Not feeling comfortable enough going forward. In the bottom lane, though, they do, they've lost the tier, the tier 1. That means these racks are exposed. And if you and you can see Foxy is like, all right, let's just poke. You know? Oh, here we go, big doom. In the Doom, gonna be under the Queen of Pain, but there's the False Promise, she'll be able On to nothing. get the Chrono onto nothing! No one is stuck in time right now! Okay, that's why she has another one this time around, gonna be catching the Shadow Trap, but the heals, not gonna be enough! He does go down, but still does have a buyback, that's one Chrono used, or two Chronos used for one kill, it's not gonna be good enough, the Shadow Trap is coming back, Sonic Wave, get away from my base, the screams will be heard, but it might be Mary's screams that are gonna be heard, the Sword Fucker comes over, the Disarms are there, takes away the Kings, uh, weapon, but it doesn't matter because still there are others that are gonna be able to take those Raxes down. Two Raxes are down right now. It's not Mega Creeps just yet. The stun onto the Queen of Pain trying to kill her, keeping her in the shackles. The force that get her closer to the base, but Reiki going forward. Ooh. Gil wants to show who's the real king here, but the Queen gets herself away. She will be living. He's not gonna be overtaking this kingdom that easily. Red Horse, they're still in this game. What a bash! Them. Going in for Nid. The bash comes out immediately, almost going down, but uses the cheese. Ooh. We'll be getting getting herself satiated quite nicely. The Doom is on everyone and AoE Doom, they want to run. Queen of Pain Doom, Void Doom, everyone is Doom. But the buyback does come out for my star. She can still fight. It is still not over. They can still win this game or can they? There's going to be another Doom being on Cat Chaser. It's time to run away. Foxy, they don't have their Shadow Shaman. They want to get themselves out. The uh, Science onto the Void Spread. He has the Yule's not going to be using it. has the Aeon Disc as well. Honey Lisa seems like it's going to be a sacrificial lamb here or will she with a few bats it's almost impossible for her to get away. A static cap not gonna help you one bit. And it's gonna be four versus three for a while here if they wanna go for it. There are no buybacks either on Sleepless or Honey Lisa. We'll see if Red Horse is willing to go aggressive here. J Lagaya is be careful. Oh, but she catches someone. She shows there. herself. Oh, actually, they're jumping in. They want the voice spread. Nin, gonna have the Dissimilate going back. Does have the Astro Step. Not gonna be using it. The Science is there. Trying to survive. Where's the Astro Step? There's the one. But the Shadow Strike is doing so much damage. You have to be careful. The TP out will be successful. Nin is alive. Lagaya barely survives. Baiting them in. Gil will be losing one of her lives. Let's see if she'll be able to get out of this one alive. Does try to get away with the BKB. No chance to TP out because the Bash of the face is void. It's gonna be impossible. Blink in a few seconds. Not an enemy happening. They silence the King. You will shut up. And the one true queen will prevail. Look at it. The Wraith is still there. You don't want to be fighting against this one, but has been disarmed. And the Wraith King will not be a problem to anyone. Does go down, does have buyback, but two of the supports do not.
Uh, is Red Dwarf gonna go uh, consider going top here? They know that there's two, so the supports don't have buyback, and they but and Jill's down. If you can force it, that is a victory condition for you right there. Just kill Jill again after she buys back in the next seven minutes. They're they're gearing up. They're taking the outpost. They won't be able to teleport there if the fight happens. Oh, it's better that they lost Jill than the Doom because Doom is, does not have buyback. Let's see what you're gonna do. How are you gonna defend these racks? There's no glyph on the side of Foxy. They will have it yeah, after this tower falls. Well. They're gonna have to give so many things away. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, trying to kill the Gaia. She's the one that set it all up. That's FD Yules keeping herself alive. Let's see for how long. No help is coming for the Gaia. She's just keeping it in a way. And now going for the second lane of racks on the side of Red Horse. It seems like they'll be able to get it. There's the glyph. Six seconds bought for Foxy Gaming without the Dawnbreaker. They don't want to fight, so they'll wait for that one. Ice Star, is she gonna have a double chrono? Seems like the answer will be a sleepless behind the doom. Comes over, there's nothing that can save you from this one. They don't have the four staffs, just keeping herself in there. Cat Chaser trying to finish off the faces void, and the faces void. Ice Star, she is dead without buyback. This is over for the side of Red Horse. It seems like the answer will be yes, but Foxy, they didn't lose sleepless, so it's still gonna be a four versus three. It is not over what? completely. Mary, <laughs> almost over, but she gets out. It's a three versus four fight, and you're up against a guy with basically free ages and the, buy the only buyback in the game. The, in the only buyback is on voice, but although Gia is going to have hers, and so is Mary in about 40 seconds. So there is still a couple of lives left for Red Horse. Hold me, man. This game is getting, like, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, uh, the Red Horse, they tried to go for the rags. They tried to keep Nin controlled as well, but it doesn't matter. All right, we have buyback on Gia available if she, if she wants to use it. There you go. Straight away, Mary. She actually bought an item. She doesn't have buyback. Yeah, wants to fight. Does have the uh, the blood thorn. So that uh, that little flower is going to be much more dangerous than the orchid. Really? Foxy are not going forward? They're afraid without the faces void? Okay, I guess they don't have buybacks, but getting at least, at least the mega creeps would be somewhat safe for them. Not going to be the case. Also, the Oracle having the, uh, having the ninja gear, that's going to be making her positioning much, much easier. One, one thing Fox has to be very careful of. They know if they lose the Doom, if they lose Sleepless, these guys aren't coming back for a, a while. Actually, uh, sorry, uh, Jill, no, not Doom. So the, they might go trade racks. They, these two, one of these two die. Suddenly, Red Horse comes out. Five people, they push. They go straight away for the throw. So there is, like, Fox is making the right move. It's, it's a bit slow, but they're making the right move. And they're giving viewers what they want. Tier 5 items. That's what we all want to see. Yeah, we're approaching those tier 5 items. They're definitely going to be making a difference. We'll see who gets what. But man, I always like to see the Giants ring. It just looks yes. so awesome. I love it. Seeing someone running across the map. So, 13k goal lead for Foxy. They're hoping for the Roche. It's not going to be there in time. And we will have a 5 versus 5 fight around the Roche pit for the end of this game. And Red Horse, they're going to be fighting for survival. So, definitely, definitely, you know, the uh, it's going to be on their side. They're definitely going to have some their hearts pumping you know the adrenaline and now they're going forward with the smoke oh my god they're oh, doing it straight for hazel get chaser uh is he gonna be okay doesn't get the uh doesn't get the doom off and here's the solar guardian though the damage is not gonna be sufficient everyone is surviving the oracle is dead the second chrono comes out is it gonna be enough the doom isn't dying she needs to go down but it's still a raid can get those dooms out if she needs to and we'll try to do so right oh, now where are the dooms the first link gets got a broken berry gonna be fine and the raid does go down there's gonna be a raid of the shadow shaman as well gonna be going down fairly soon does get the hex before going out also the shackles are there and some of the serpent wards will be summoned too it's gonna be a two for two across the board in that fight with the road surviving but two chronos have been expended there's a buyback on cat chaser if she wants to use it i mean she is the biggest kill that happened and they are going straight for roshan oh dear god this is gonna be risky there are no ultimates on red horse Oh. Horse, though, they, they can't give this away. They have to come forward. You can see Ice Star coming forward. He uses the BKB. That's going to be a big one. They need Ningen dead. Not going to be happening. She even has a buyback, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal running into the pit. They want to see if the Roche is low. No, it is full HP, full mana. The Roche is there. It is completely safe, but not for long if Foxy have anything to say about it. Well, and we are officially in, in tier 5 item territory. And looks like they're just, oh, they're poking. Both Bo team very worried about starting this fight and losing. We are, oh, this is a very tense game. Remember, loser, if Red Horse loses, they are out of the tournament. Fox Gaming do not want to go to game three. 
Uh, they definitely don't. If they win this one, they'll be getting themselves to the lower bracket final, securing the top three, even though they came from the wild cards. Oh. They're still going to be quite strong. There's the dissimilate. That's root right now. Level 25. Actually, level 29. The uh, bashes are going to be amazing, but the jump out Nin is going to be okay. Now jumping on on Ice It doesn't have the Lincolns, but the damage is not going to be sufficient. Gil not doing enough damage. Backtrack. I don't know why. Backtrack. Even tickling the void. Yeah, the backtrack is there. He's just dodging left, right, left, right. He has learned some martial arts throughout the uh, throughout this game, but where are the tier 5 items? Finally, there's going to be force boost. There's going to be something coming out, but also a Wind Waker. That is something that could change the game if you get that one on your teammate who's in the chrono. Oh, uh, by, by the way, one, one good thing is that Space Boy was able to pick up the Apex right before that fight happened, which gives her 70, 70 agility, which was really helpful that I guess that all that physical damage coming out from Jill just now. Mary, she's like, I don't care, I'm just going for it. Holy shit, are they, are, is Foxy gonna let them go get, like, go get, get this? No, no, they, they scan, they scan, they're not gonna allow them. Foxy Gaming, the girls are coming over, but look at the Dawnbreaker just in the other part of the map. Just doesn't want to be a part of it, wants just to use the Solar Guardian to protect her teammates. Aeon Discs are out, all of the defensive items are out for Foxy Gaming. They're very hard to kill oh. inside of the Chrono. Oh no! What? Typhoon, what are you doing? Not now! Come, oh, that's not how it was. And we are back, Ligaya doesn't have the electricity and most likely will not be coming back. So we will be resuming this game four versus five, very anticlimactic Automo, but there is still gonna be a chance for Red Horse. How much does this mean to them? Is it a problem that they're gonna be missing a hero? I mean, it's huge, right? Besides the fact that you all, you have one, you know, one player, one person playing as two players, you also have that motivational feeling like, oh, we're down one person. Who knows if the guys was the shot caller, if she's like helping them itemize in terms of like which new tribe goes there there's so much that you lose from one person going and it's a little unfortunate Ligaya is, is a huge part of their team and yeah Hoodwink may not be the you know the ultimate best late game support like something like a uh, Winter Wyvern or Phoenix but you still need all hands on deck so I feel bad for Red Horse win or lose it's not gonna taste as the same for uh, for Foxy Gaming yeah, even Foxy Gaming aren't going to be feeling that good uh, because of this one. You always want to win against the enemies when they are at their best. Though I star, you can see that she's not giving up. They're going to be going for jail. Want to get the kill. The BKB is going to be popped, but the Chrono will be there still. The Solar Guardian is at the ready, but there's not going to be a BKB. On to jail. They've taken down the one life. And now we're Giant running away because Cat Chaser is here. Giant Ring, who has it? Oh, it's going to be the uh, the Dawnbreaker. We'll see who she give it, gives it to. Oh, Sleepless. I'm not sure what she's doing, but she's in a lot of trouble right now. But there's the Solar Guardian coming over. They're going to be pulling in the Pango. And we talked about how important this hero is. And it's just dead. The Doom onto the Queen of Pain. They see her clearly. Are trying to kill her. There's going to be the Lincoln's pop. Another Chrono. I star can go for that one. Does she have the refresher? Going to be popping the BKB. But the buybacks do come out. They've lost the Oracle. It's going to be three versus five right now. No double life on the Raid King, but we'll have it soon. And then we see just the difference. Without the Hoodwink, it's impossible. Yeah, but at least now that they're actually going to be using a Gia, she's dead. No buybacks. She's like, all right, I might as well use it. Two buybacks are being used, and Foxy Gaming, they're playing this very carefully. They, might, they, want, they don't want to give anything more than they absolutely have to. There is a close fear if they use the Refresher Orb, though, on the Faceless Void. Let's see if High Star wants that one under the sentry, though. Even with the Silver Edge, she is going to be spotted. So now, jumping in, jumping out, in and out. That's going to be something that she Throws wants to threatened. do. In, going in, being a... Very aggressive, being very annoying, but in the end, Isar does refresh that one. They need the Chrono, but look at that. The, uh, the Aghanim Scepters, the cheeses, the refreshers, everything is being given away. Foxy Gaming, they have so many things to work with, and they are going to be up against the lineup that is missing one hero. How do you fight now if you're Red Horse? And Ash uh, Chapman gets the, the Aghanim Scepter. She's got a refresher shot. She's going to go drop two snakes. She already has a snake talent, as both snake talents as well. So there's really no way for them to defend. They do have, they do have a glyph as well. It's a tough situation if you are a red horse, you know, you're, out, you're down Raxes, you're down players, and you're down buybacks as well. 
I pretty much don't have anything right now, but let's not feel sorry for these girls. They have shown that they can fend for themselves, and Foxy Gaming still has it. If even in a 4 versus 5, they know who their opponents are and how dangerous they can be. Gil leading the charge. He has, she has been the one in the front snakes. of King. Was on this one, and now the snakes do come out. But the Rono will be there onto the voice screen. The Solar Guardian will be protecting all of them. You will not kill my girls. And now, Sleepless with the on this with a BKB. Give herself. There's gonna be a big Sonic wave, but the throne is dying. The snakes are just killing it. Holy and Red Horse, you are all gonna survive, but you're thrown. So you will watch as you lose this game and as you get eliminated from the tournament. Oh, very so unfortunate for them that uh, that had to happen. They actually had they actually had a glyph in that last and when they could defend the throne. But like we said, no no one's focused on that. There's just so much you have to do in these fights. And in the end, Fox Gaming takes it a little bit in an awkward situation, but a win's a win. They make it to the uh, lower bracket finals, guaranteed top three. Red Horse, they're going home, $500 in, the, in their pockets. Not exactly what we expected, but Typhoons, man, you, can just, you just can't take them on. Yeah, you definitely can. They're way too strong, though. Let's not take it away from Foxy Gaming. They won game number one. They yes. were in the lead for the majority of game number two. So... It is it is a deserved victory. For I sure. feel like Red Horse, Red Horse. They did have their shining moments, but in the end, it wasn't enough. Of course, they're gonna have a little bit of a uh, a bitter uh, you know feeling in their mouth, but they'll get over it. Then they'll come back stronger again. It was a great draft taking that Wraith King last pick. It worked very well for them. Nin suffered in the lane stage, but was able to have an influence later. Love the Dawnbreaker combination. Uh, like she was able to get all the items she needed to counter the Chronosphere. But that is. The second series of the day done and dusted. 2-0, 2-0. The next game is going to be Fox Gaming against Roar. But we're gonna take we're gonna take a little bit of a break for before that one, aren't we, Harry Freak? Yeah, I think we need about 20 minutes then, and then we're going to be coming back with the lovely panel to analyze this game and kind of introduce us to the lower bracket finals. So stay with us, guys. We'll be back in around 20 minutes. <laughs> 